Welcome back. My name is Agent York. Yours truly, FBI Detective. How many of you have actually played the first game? I'm just wondering. Uh, in a, first came out on Xbox 360, uh, I believe 2008 came out on uh, 360, and there was a definitive edition, Director's Cut, that came later on on PlayStation 3, and I played it on PlayStation 3, uh, Director's Cut. Uh, it was such an awesome game. If you never played the first one, I would highly recommend that you play the first game and uh, play the uh, director's cut of Deadly Premonition, the first one. It's like uh, Twin Peaks, but just more bizarre, more funnier, and uh, great. A lot of fun. I had a lot of fun with the game, the first one. So uh, for those of you who are not familiar with uh, Deadly Premonition, Go check it out, man. Check out the first game. I'm gonna wait for so you, for some of you guys to show up, and then we're gonna do this. In the meantime, I'm gonna drink my coffee. Wait for you guys. So, cheers. All right. <laughs> Gotta wait for my regulars to show up. See what it says here? Life is good. Yes. Life is good when LG gives you a free TV. Yeah. Maybe you should try that. Maybe you should try working hard instead of living in your mama's basement. Maybe you should try working hard and maybe you'll get something in this life. Just maybe. Or maybe you won't. Uh, even if I had any fucks to give, I give zero fucks. Seriously, dude. For, for your own health, kid, get a fucking life. Do you want to live longer or do you want to die with a fucking diabetes in your mama's basement? What do you want to fucking do? I'm in urging you as a human being, get a fucking life, dude. Seriously. What's up, Mamba man? How you doing? What's happening? <laughs> Are you guys ready for this? Deadly premonition. How many of you have played Deadly Premonition? I'm just wondering how many of you have actually played this. Uh, play this game. The first one. How many? Did you ever play the first one? Mamba? Oh man, you're missing out, bro. You need to play the first game. To truly understand why this agent is so much fun, why this agent is a uh, interesting character, uh, you will find out as we go through the game how funny this guy is. But also, t the best way to explain this game is don't take it too seriously. Have fun with it. It's like, um, you ever seen the movie Cold Pursuit with Liam Neeson? It's kind of like that. Or uh, No Country for Old Men. Or what's the other... Um, the film director I'm trying to... Like Twin Peaks mixed with... Uh, let me see. Twin Peaks mixed with Big Lebowski. Like Coen's Brothers movie. Think of this like a Coen's Brothers movie. Don't take it seriously. It is serious, but it's also funny. But don't take it seriously. It's like a dark comedy, uh, and it's a lot of fun. It's 
so that's like the best way I can explain uh, deadly premonitions. But you gotta play the first game to to truly understand like what I mean. So if you never played it, I highly encourage that you guys play it. Go play the first game and um, enjoy it. Other than that, let's go start. Uh, let's enjoy this. Let's have fun. Now, this tree is from the first game. Uh, there's a reason for this tree. This tree is from the first game. But you got to play the first game to understand why that tree is there. All right, December 30th, 2018. La Caire, at a small town outside New Orleans. All right. A murder has occurred. Wow, she's been dissected. What the fuck? And frozen. Thompsonville, the suburbs of Boston. Hmm. God damn it. What a way to start the new year. At this rate, I'll be dead by Easter. Quiet down, Agent Jones. You're on the clock. Quiet down? Ha! <laughs> you, you have any idea what you've done? I'd be half naked in Havana right now if you hadn't shown up. Soaking up some rays, surrounded by a harem of bikini queens, a mojito in one hand, and a seafood slathered Havana style pizza in the other. What did I do to deserve this? Does God hate me? No. The regional bureau chief merely issued a special order. <laughs> oh. Yeah. How could I forget? A special order to rob me of my well-deserved vacation. You want pizza? I'll buy you some pizza. You can find that junk anywhere. Whoa! Hey! Hold on a minute. Agent Jones, don't let him take control of the conversation. The moment you let your guard down, he'll strike. <laughs> And no red, remember? It's open. Come on in. Oh shit, it's Francis Zach Morgan. <laughs> <clears throat> What's going on with my camera all of a sudden now? Here we go. Oh my god, that's Zach Morgan? What the fuck happened to him? Agent York, Zach Morgan. What? You have questions for us. That's why you're here, isn't it? So this is him 
at a uh, later year when he when he when he's older. So something happened. Yeah, man, I'm always forever young, brother. Forever young. Forever young. Kind of like the Mel Gibson movie. You ever seen that movie? Forever young? Mel Gibson? Yeah. Mr. Morgan, before we question you, allow me to first read you your rights. Anything you say may be used against you in a court of law. Hmm. Please keep that in mind as you speak. Do we have permission to film this? Aliyah Davis. Hmm? Don't worry, my fairy. They're free to do whatever they like. Something wrong, Mr. Morgan? <clears throat> I'm FBI Special Agent Aaliyah Davis, and this is... Simon Jones. An analyst from the Boston branch. He's been monitoring us for years now. Oh, uh... Hi. To, to understand this game, you have to play the first one. Seriously. A southern belle and a lonesome loser who can't catch a break. Quite the uncanny duo. You'd be the perfect stars for the latest video game. But Isn't he that is. right, my fairy? <laughs> How many years has it been since someone came to chat with us? Oh, but don't ask me about my fairy. That's a private matter. Hmm. It's hard to tell what he's thinking, but my eyes can't be deceived. So, in the first game, uh, he responded to this uh, murder that happened in this one town, small town. And uh, a lot of weird shit has happened there. It's like a Twin Peaks. But this Zach Morgan has split personality, identity crisis. He is not exactly a uh, normal human being. There's multiple uh, identities that he has. Uh, but to, to truly kind of dive into it, you really have to finish the first game and connect the dots to understand who he really is. It's really a weird game, but uh, I got it. I understood it in the beginning. But it's also funny. This is game. This game. It's not. Here's. Let me explain to you guys what this game is. What the first one is. It's a like Cohen's brothers movie. Like Liam Neeson, Cold Pursuit. It's serious, but it's a dark comedy. You know, you laugh about it, but it's also serious. So it's like a dark comedy, but with some sense of dark hu I mean, humor, if you will. Uh, and it's also strange, like Twilight Zone, Out of Limits, Twin Peaks, all put into one pot and then you put humor inside of it so it's kind of like that it's a mixed bag of all of those things <clears throat> i mean it looks good for oh performance of the first game was awesome dude it's great characters uh amazing characters man much better interesting story and much better interesting characters than the last of us part two just saying just saying, Neil Druck, but my man, Druck man. <laughs> if he's hiding something, it'll come out in his face. 
so I guess that the sequel, what I'm trying to understand here, uh, the sequel is going back in, back and forth, future, past, present, and then I guess we'll be, he'll be telling us the story, and then Aaliyah, the agent, the sexy looking agent, Aaliyah, Aaliyah will have to uh, figure out whether he's telling them the truth or bullshitting them. So I guess that's what we're going to be doing in this game. While he's telling us what happened, we'll be playing throughout the game, and then we'll have to figure out whether or not, she'll have to figure out whether or not he's telling is the truth. So uh, it should be interesting. I wish that you guys had played the first one, because if you had played the first one, it would be much easier for you guys to kind of like understand, oh, I, I'm on the same page. The way you guys feel is if... I know exactly how you feel. It's like stepping into a season 8 of Game of Thrones. Let's say you've never seen Game of Thrones. And all of a sudden, you step into a season 8 of Game of Thrones. You have no fucking clue. Who is who? What the fuck's going on? You're like, what, what is this shit? So, I, I feel bad that many of you didn't play this game. Because uh, it's a shame that you haven't played it. Because it's really... it's a. Uh, was a lot of fun and I highly I highly recommend that you guys play the first game on PlayStation 3 if you can find it or uh, maybe on PlayStation now they have it on PlayStation now I think I think so all right let me look around hold on this smell he's got a lot of DVDs Yeah, this is a Switch exclusive. I didn't know that the sequel was out. What happened is yesterday, I went to check out Alana's uh, Piers uh, live stream. I said, what? I thought maybe she made a mistake. Maybe she put De uh, Deadly Premonition 2 by mistake or something. Because I didn't know that there was a sequel. And then I click on it and it's like, I'll be damned. There, there is a sequel. And it's out. And... Um, I guess I slept under a rock. I didn't know. And it's on Switch. Exclusively on Nintendo Switch. I had no idea, man. Because I'm too focused on The Last of Us and Ghost of Tsushima and Iron Man. So I totally sidetracked on Nintendo. I had no idea. It doesn't surprise me at this point, but it'll be problematic in court if they decide his testimony is unreliable. At this point hold on a second let me can I move a little bit here so you guys can you see let me see if I can make myself a little bit smaller like this yeah I want you guys to be able to read uh, what it says on there I won't get another chance to talk to him face to face like this I love that voice oh my god this this shit is turning me on I'm already like uh, attracted to Aaliyah. I'm serious, dude. Right now, I love this character. No, I really. I'm. That's it, man. I'm. I'm loving Aaliyah right now. I hope nothing happens to her. Uh, I want to see nothing happen to her in this game. All right. Don't do, don't pull the Joel on me. I hope Neil Druckmann is not responsible for this game. I need to get him to stop smoking that for a bit. Ooh, please don't make him stop. <laughs> Zach Indulgence. What's over here? Messy awards and trophies. Hmm. You solved many difficult cases across your career. Oof. Wow. Isn't she hot or what, man? Oof. Utilizing your own unique M.O. You've expertly cracked cases that were otherwise thought to be unsolvable. She gotta be, listen, I would tell her, hey, uh, it's me. I committed a crime. Arrest me, FBI agent Aaliyah. It is me. But first pat me down. You know, you might have something in there. You never know. Some objects might be in there. <laughs> like a third leg. 
<laughs> According to our records. What records? After joining the FBI in 2002, you quickly solved two drug ring related kidnapping cases. Nice. In 2003, you solved the inside out flesh skinner case in the suburbs of Pittsburgh. In 2004, the Jeffrey Dahmer wannabe case in Milwaukee. Wow. Wow. And also the stuffed human collector case in St. Louis that very same year. Then. Then, of course, in the first game, in that small town where that uh, woman was killed by that tree. In 2005, you coincidentally happened to solve the Lee Clarkson murder case while on vacation. Man, I'm gonna have to dig. I'm gonna have to find out. That thing on the IMDb for her? Come on. Can she choose to be uh, uncredited? Is it possible for an actor to choose to be uncredited? You went on to solve many other cases after that, all of them seemingly inexplicable. But why would actor do that, right? Actor, actor or actress would never do that, right? They want you to know who they, who you, who they are. They want you to know their work. That's strange. Nothing on IMDb. Hmm. Mm. Hold on a second, man. That ain't right. That ain't right. Give me a second, guys. We gotta investigate this. Agent York, I'm going to investigate this. Let's see, Aaliyah Davis. No, I mean, this is, hold on, we gotta find out what's going on. I need to see how she looks, hold on. Hey, hey, Aaliyah, Aaliyah. Ooh, a lot of hot Aaliyahs out there. <gasps> oh my goodness. Lord have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy, I, I cannot handle this. Hold on. <laughs> Lord help, Davis. Hold on, Aaliyah Davis. Uh, Aaliyah Davis. Aaliyah Davis. Uh, Deadly Premonition. Um, uh, voice actor. Not there's nothing. You better not die, Aaliyah Davis. You better not dive in this game. If she dies in this game, I'll be very pissed. That's like two games that are gonna piss me off. Like like your two favorite characters dying. Hold on. No, you're right, man. There, there's nothing on her. There's nothing on her, man. What? Anyway, you're right. Yes, Queen of the Dame. Oh my God, Aaliyah. Oh, and then she died. Oh God, she died at such a young age. Man, we lost some good. You know what pisses me off? You know what really pisses me off? When good people die. Good talents, young good talents die. That drives me fucking crazy, man. It really does. All we're left is bunch of a-holes. She was she was a goddess. No, no, no. She was the goddess. If you look at her music videos and, and that movie when she played a vampire. Um, oh, you know what? I'm going to buy that movie. I got to buy that movie, man. I used to have it on, on the DVD. I got to buy it. I'm going to buy it. Man. I'm going to order that shit. Hey, before we continue, I want to say something. Philip and uh, Andre and everybody. I have a feeling that uh, the retail store is going to go out of business, man. I walk into a Best Buy today. Dude, there's nothing. Empty shelves. Everything's empty. I went to Target. Everything's empty. Uh, what the fuck's going I mean, I think they're going to go out of business, man. I don't know. But it's just there's nothing there. You can't find nothing. You can't find a microphone. You can't find a console. You can't find nothing. Everything's empty. Almost half empty, bro. It's crazy. I think they're gonna go out of business, man. 
that's, that's it. That's it. Sad but true. Jeff Bezos. This is a great news for Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos is going to make... Dude, he already has got more money than God. How much more do you need, Jeff Bezos? How much more do you need? This is Jeff Bezos' response. I am a bold guy. I want everything. <laughs> All right, let's let's go. Let's move on. Did you really solve these cases all on your own? Oof, oh my gosh, she's so hot. Whew. Come on, man. Look, look. She is. Aaliyah Davis, super hot, man. If I was uh, Morgan Zach, York, Morgan Zach, I would say, of course. But first you need to search me. Then we'll talk more answers. Oh, yeah. That's right. That's right, Philip. It will be. There are no records of you using a wide-scale investigative team or working with anyone else. That's because I'm very good at cleaning my tracks and cookies. How did you ever accomplish such monumental feats all by yourself? Well... It was not easy, but all it takes, it's a, a little aggressive expansion, and here we go. It was all thanks to our talented partner. Hey, who is that partner? Partner. The FBI files show no record of you ever working with a partner. Do you mean you worked with some sort of unofficial partner or an outside confidant? I think he's lying. He's manipulating already. That's what happens when you have a multi-identity, when you're schizophrenic, when you're bipolar. In, in, inside your head, you're already talking to yourself and then you you're spitting out manipulation lies our partner is our partner we've always worked together besides bell you're forgetting one important thing now what could that be after the st louis case hmm we stopped by a diner on our way home and caught Thelma and Louise, two highly sought after fugitives. <laughs> you can use visions to acquire important hints that will help you proceed through the game. Hold L to use visions. Okay. How do you do that? Hold the L. Dressed so handsomely. What are you talking about? The thick black accessory wrapped around your Oof. neck. Oh, my goodness. Ooh. Wow. Wow. I told you. 
What's up, Steve? How you doing? God damn. She's so hot, man. Damn it. Why can't we find IMDB of this actress? I don't like that they're keeping her secret. Why they're keeping her secret? I want to know how she looks like. <sighs> I can't believe, man. I'm, I'm already, like, uh, attracted to her immediately. I got a crush on her. What's up, Steven? How you doing? How was your Friday? That's a male necktie. The color black represents confidence and interest in the self. I'm playing um, Deadly Premonition, which is a sequel to the first game that was originally released on Xbox 360 and then on a PlayStation 3 Director's Cut. I recommend playing the, the first game on PlayStation 3 Director's Cut. Maybe one of these days I'll do it. Maybe I'm going to play through it to show you the first game uh, and the first game was just uh, super fun man I had so much fun yes it's also on Nintendo Switch but in 2008 came out first on the Xbox 360 and then PlayStation 3 You know what, Mamba? Well, there you go. I can do the original and this one. I can play through both of them. There we go, Mamba Man. Mamba Man is my man. Mamba Man is my man. My right hand man. Now I'm sound like a semi Jaeger. And. Your decision to wear a male tie symbolizes your declaration of war against a predominantly male society. Oh! Ho, 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 ho. Thank you. Thank you. Finally, somebody has the balls to do it. And they did it in Nintendo. Out of all the places, they did it on Nintendo. He just called her out. With the Me Too movement and SJW. But look, it's okay. If she has the Me Too movement and SJW movement, I don't care. I'll be her simp. I'll be her dicklet. I don't care. I don't care, Francis. I know. I'm willing to play the fucking game. That's a small little price I have to pay. To be a dicklet and a simp. For Aaliyah. <laughs> But I love that they that they put that in this game. Neil Druckmann would never put this inside The Last of Us. Neil Druckmann, you know. You, you, Neil Druckmann. You, 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 you know, you. Mm. Or perhaps. <laughs> well, enjoy the ride, man. Enjoy this game. It'll be a... Uh... Fasten your seatbelt. This game, it's uh, all over the place. It's weird. It's strange. It's an adult game. It's all of the above. So enjoy the ride. It's a psychological barrier meant to hide the weakness that dwells deep within your psyche. Now, people, some people can do this. You guys know there's people who can read your mind. There's people who can see through you. Uh, and they can make you feel uncomfortable. Because you know, even though you're denying it, you know they're telling you the truth about yourself. Imagine how, how scary that is. That somebody can read you and tell you everything about you. Meeting you the first time. And you know nothing. You don't know nothing about him or her. And he or she is telling you everything about you, but you have zero, zero knowledge about who they are. Imagine that kind of power. Dude, that's, if that's not scary, then I don't know what the fuck is.
this is this year 20, uh, 2020 just got released in july 2020 i think july 7th or 6th or something like that uh this week on nintendo switch exclusively on nintendo nintendo we admire your bravery Oh, today? Thank you, Mamba. So it was today. All right. I had no idea. You know how I find out? I find out from watching uh, Alana Pierce. Uh, and I was like, what the, what the hell? There's actually a sequel already out? I was like, what? And then I find out that there is. Well, there it is. Which is perfect. It gives me something to play over the weekend. So I can prepare for the big one. Ghost of Tsushima. I thought you retired from profiling. Oh yeah. Oh, there's a tons of exclusives on Nintendo. Nintendo, it's all about exclusives. They're exclusive characters. Animal Crossing, I mean, Pokemon! Um, Nintendo's all about exclusivity. And again, who is leader of video games? Japanese industries. Japanese, always been a leader when it comes to video games, man. Bullseye, huh? Oh, this is definitely ad adult. Big time. Nintendo has um, has grown up a little bit. Nintendo, it's uh, it's growing up. It's going back to GameCube and N64 days. So they're growing up a little bit. They're getting back to it. They're getting rid of this whole VU, you know, V uh, mentality, and they're they're getting back into let's let's do variety, which is a good thing. There's a bunch of adult games now on uh, on Nintendo Switch. Tons of cool games on Nintendo. Yeah, you're an easy one to read. In order to think with society. My gosh, she's so hot. A man must first gouge out his eyes and cut off his ears. Ooh! Let's not do that, Aaliyah. Listen, I'm willing to be a dicklet. I'm willing to be a simp. But I need my eyes, goddammit. Come on, and I need my ears. Don't judge a book by its cover. Oh my god, she's right. Don't judge the book by its cover. Dude, she might be into some freaky shit herself. When someone tells you, don't judge a book by its cover, you better believe it. For someone who's supposed to have been one of our best, you've got an awful eye for people. Thank you. Ah, uh, 12 XP. Or did all that smoke and kill all your little gray cells? Ooh, man, how are you going to counter that? She's working him now. Okay, Aaliyah, that's enough. She's smart, but she's also more of a shrew than she lets on. Agent Jones, that's sexual harassment. <laughs> I told you, she's a me too, an SJW, but I don't care. Sometimes you, you can't let that stuff bother you, man. You gotta go with the flow. <laughs> so, Bell. It's funny, he already gave her a nickname. But you see, he's doing that purposely because he knows that she doesn't like to be called a bell. 
but he's gonna call her Belle anyway because he knows that uh, she looks down upon men misogynist men the casting couch men the pigs yes they got they got tons of shit uh, on Nintendo man there's a lot a lot a lot a lot of good shit Art Morgan we got a lot a lot of good shit does that barrier of yours also protect you from violent criminals did you see that new uh, Nintendo Switch uh, Slim or whatever it's called? Nintendo. S no, it's not. It's Nintendo Switch, but it's just a portable thing. What you call it? What you call that thing? Nintendo whatever. You have 3D. Uh, do you have 3DS? Uh, 3DS XL. Mamba, you got 3DS XL. Oh, you do? Cool. <laughs> hey, did you see Derek? Is Derek around or is he working? Because uh, I know Derek's going to like this shit, man. Uh, he's definitely going to enjoy this. I'm sure Mr. Urban will be here later on. And uh, Derek will be here later on. So we got plenty of time. We're just warming up. I'm just kind of warming up, you know, like uh, warming up the uh, the whole thing. Like a prologue. Think of, think of this like a prologue. He's more dangerous than I thought. I can't read him. Mm. By the way, this guy who created this game... Uh, he follows me on Twitter. Uh, I know him a little bit. I mean, I don't know him that he's Japanese, but uh, his English is good, but it's not like it's not that good, you know. It's kind of like Kojima, like you know. So it's like it's like basics, just basics. Hi, hi. What's new? Hi, good, bye. That's it. But uh, I I know the guy. Uh, he's on my Twitter. I swear. I'll just have to assault him head on with questions then. I'll ask him about Aaliyah. I swear to God. I'm going to ask him about who is the actress that's uh, voicing Aaliyah Davis. First, I'll try using the files on the table to shake him up. All right, let's look. Uh, let's look around. Let's hold the L. Unfinished chess game. Do you remember the homicides that took place in Lucare, Louisiana in 2005? We... ...solved that case. Hmm. So this game might go into a prequel. I think we might be going in past, before the first one. Your report states the following. La Cré. La Cré. La Cré. La Cré. Oui. La Cré. Oui. What's up, James? How you doing, bro? I'm doing good, man. Doing good. Enjoying this, uh, this Twin Peaks, X Files, uh, No Country for Old Men, uh, mixture of everything, uh, sequel game. By coincidence, you encountered a serious incident in a town you visited while on vacation. Hmm. I don't know who said it, but I think we're going to go in past. So this is going to be before the first game, the prequel. So we're going to go back in past to learn more about him. 
I know, Philip. I looked. I tried to look everywhere. It drives me crazy. Uh, I can't even remember this guy uh, who who developed the game, and uh, he follows me on on twit on twit uh, on uh, on Twitter. He follows me on Twitter, and I uh, I tried to remember his name because he's a developer of this game. I want to ask him. Hey, do you know who this uh, actress is? The voice actor, Aaliyah, because she's so damn fine. Don't make me blind, because she is so damn fine. Don't make me blind. Tell me her name. Come on. Damn it. <laughs> uh, so how is that one treating you? It's a, it's a very difficult uh, simulation, but... I'm getting, I'm getting hang of it. It's a very tough uh, and challenging uh, simulation, Formula One game. Uh, but uh, it's tough, man. That that thing, it's you have to be focused constantly. You then decided to steal the right to investigate from the local law enforcement and took over the case. Hmm. To steal the right to investigate from the local law enforcement took over the case. Hmm. After several more homicides, you managed to apprehend the perpetrator. Yes. Yes. Yes, that's exactly what happened. Yes, sweary, 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 sweary. Yeah, yeah. I got him. The Japanese guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look, I'm gonna uh, ask him a question about this. Hopefully he'll reply. I hope, I hope he remembers me. There was another game that I played on, uh, it was on Xbox. Uh, here, let me show you some. This was the game that, I still have it, it's right here, dude. Uh, let me go to my... D4 Dark Dreams five years ago. That's when he followed me on the, the Twitter. Five years ago, I played this. Uh, I still have it. Uh, season one D4 Dark Dreams Don't Die. And uh, I enjoy that game, dude. And then he dropped me a follow on the Twitter. So it's Sweary. That's him. Yeah, yeah. D4 Dark Dreams Don't Die. Just scroll down on my homepage. Of YouTube and you will see D4 dark dreams don't die that's why I remember him because I did a live stream five years ago long time ago and of course the reason I played the D4 dark dreams it's because I was a huge fan of deadly premonition the director Scott uh, on PlayStation 3 and I was like hell yeah dude he's good he's good Better than Neil Druckmann. Better, 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 better than Neil Druckmann. Yes, 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 yes. Shh, don't tell Neil. He's better than Neil Druckmann. <laughs> yes, uh, James, I have heard about it. I'm so excited, dude. I'm so freaking excited about PlayStation. Five, uh, Nintendo. I'm excited about these cloud gaming services to see where, which way they go. I'm excited about uh, PlayStation VR 2, and uh, I'm also excited about obviously X Series X. I want to see how Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 and Halo Infinite looks. There's a guy in Halo Infinite that looks like Joel. Looks exactly like Joel. Uh, almost sounds like Joel. Uh, Troy Baker didn't do a voiceover for it, but the guy sounds like Joel, uh, and he works with Master Chief. I think you guys gonna really love Halo Infinite. I think you guys gonna really fall in love with. Uh, I think Halo Infinite could be probably the best Halo. And I'm gonna go on a limb, but I'm gonna say it would be the best fucking Halo that we had had. And I normally wouldn't say that, but I did some digging. And I, I think you guys are gonna fucking love Halo Infinite. 
we stole the right to investigate from them, just as you said. The reason I say you're going to love Halo Infinite, because Halo Infinite finally brings all of that. The conclusions, the mystery, the whole thing. Brings it to a closure. Finally. And I think that's the beauty of the, the Halo Infinite you guys are going to love. Yeah, first Halo, and then of course Halo Infinite. It's just, it's going to be top, top fucking notch. Trust me. It's going to be the, the best selling... It's going to be a console seller. It's going to sell the X Series X. It's going to be selling it like like crazy. It all started when the body of a 16-year-old girl was discovered. You should go with the C10, man. C10 um I really can't find anything wrong. I even use the filmmaker mode on it and uh even under a filmmaker, you're still getting the free sync you're still getting the uh, low latency performance mode. Uh, really, there's really... I, I can't find anything wrong with that TV. Everything's just... Package deal. Perfect package deal. Perfect for gaming. Perfect for movies. Um, Burn-in? Well, burn-in. That's like... There's always a chance of you getting, uh, God forbid, COVID-19. There's always a chance of you getting stuck in the elevator. There's always a chance you might get in a car accident. There's always a chance your uh, battery might die while you're driving. Uh, there's always a chance of chance of chance of chance of chance of this chance of that. But you can't just have that mentality of being afraid. You know, like, oh, I need to worry about this. No. Sometimes in life... You got to take a chance. You got to take a risk, you know, and see for yourself. Don't just listen to all these naysayers out there, you know. You can't live your life listening to naysayers. If I listened to naysayers, dude, I wouldn't fucking move out of my house. I'd be just be like in a cocoon, in a cocoon, just like stuck in a cocoon, frozen in cocoon. You can't let other fucking people dictate on how you live and how you think. Uh, I can tell you, I can speak for LG. If LG knew that their panels, organic, organic light emitting diodes, self emitting diode panels, have this major issue and problem of an immediate burn in, there would be a major recall. Major recall. All of the panels will be pulled out of the shelves from the stock. You wouldn't be able to buy them anymore. They would move to a different technology, maybe micro LEDs. You wouldn't see any more OLED. They would not make any more OLED panels. If that was the case. If that was the case. But that's not the case. That's somebody's agenda who's trying to push it. But that's not the case. <clears throat> <clears throat> That's a great deal, man. Seventeen hundred for fifty-five. Go for it, man. Go for it. C ten, bro. C ten all the way, man. C ten, all the way. You arrived in Lucare immediately after that, didn't you? So he was in. Hold on. I'm trying to catch up with the story. So he was in St. Louis, or was it New Orleans? New Orleans or St. Louis? Hold on. We just can't seem to keep ourselves away from dead girls. Hmm. Did you really visit that town just to take a vacation? We don't know. Oh, he's not telling her anything. He's just beating around the bush, man. If you already have the report, then we suggest you read it, Bell. He's good. Zach. Francis Zach York Morgan. He's pretty good. Either way, that case is closed. Hmm. Man, he's fucking good. 
closed. You sure about that? Don't you think this puzzle is still missing some crucial pieces? <laughs> Come on. No need to beat around the bush with us, Belle. Oh, there is a time to beat around the bush. They found Lee Clarkson's body. It was hidden deep within the Clarkson Food Delivery Services cold storage warehouse. Clarkson Food Delivery. Oh my god. Are we talking about a Hannibal Lecter? That'd be, that's imagine if this imagine if this shit was really happening where they were like kidnapping certain hot you know chicks and then drugging them killing them and then packaging them and preserving them for a food for some kind of ritual of cannibals imagine if that shit existed holy fuck holy fuck fuck the Stephen King movie that would be like beyond Stephen King that's like a uh, Hannibal Lecter's wet dream. Shit. Shit. Oh. Fuck, maybe there's... Oh, my God. It's, it's a wonderful year. Wonderful, wonderful 2020. There was a quote in the movie. And uh, I love this fucking quote in, um, in a movie that I saw not too long ago. Dr. Sleep. Where Danny says, Danny says, the the world is very hungry and dark place. Dude, when he send that sends fucking chills into my narrow bones. When he said that, dude, it was fucking so chilling. It says, the world, it's a hungry, very hungry and dark place. I was like, fuck. Fuck! And then I hear Dr. Disrespect say, Wake up! Wake up! And then he disappears. You hear nothing from Dr. Disrespect. Dr. Sleep. What the fuck's going on, man? <laughs> anyway, enough of this mumbo jumbo. Let's go. Let's continue. After 14 years, we finally discovered the body of the very first victim. Aliyah Davis. I don't like looking at these photos. Do you know what this means? That's why we're here. The first victim in the case he solved. Lise Clarkson. Hmm. This is a photograph of what she looks like now. How will he react when he sees it? That's a good question. How is he going to react? Probably nonchalantly, coldly, with a laugh, he'll look at it and say, Hmm. Amusing. No, I don't see anything. We're pleased that her body turned up. Deeply pleased. You claim to have closed this case, but now a lost body suddenly surfaced. Aren't you curious about the details? Body or not, we already solved that case. Hmm. Hmm. Lisa's body can't change anything now. Mario 4K in HDR. 
Yes. Nintendo, listen, man, Nintendo is perfect for HDR. All of Nintendo games are just screaming for high dynamic range. And it certainly has nothing to do with us. Hmm. Hmm. I suspect the body was stored there rather than abandoned, due to the unnatural state it was found in. He was frozen. There was a commercial for a site named Gaia before coming on here. Gaia, Gaia, what is Gaia? What is Gaia? That, that's that's what I would like to know. What is a Gaia? Be young, believe shit. Yeah. But who you to be? Hold on. I gotta do the Dracula thing. Welcome to my home. Proceed. My name is Vlad. Tapesh Dracul. <laughs> Gaia.com. I think uh, Gary Oldman, man, he's still the D Dracula, man. Fucking A. The way he portrayed that Vlad Tapesh prince, Romanian Vlachian prince, Dracul, son of Dracula. No, no, he was a Dracula, son of Dracul. I mean, son of the devil. Um, he really portrayed that Bram Stoker Dracula perfectly. Uh, he played it really well. Uh, Gary Oldman, man. Back in the days. Fucking beast. <clears throat> she was found frozen in a storage unit. Was Keanu Reeves? Yeah. Keanu Reeves was in it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Keanu Reeves was in that movie. That's right. He was. Oh, yeah. Uh, Ian Barcelona. So if you played the first one, you know exactly just how weird and funny. This game, it's also funny. I just want to tell people, it's a dark comedy. Um, it's like uh, Cohen's Brothers movie. You know, Cohen's Brothers movie has always some dark humor in it, you know. Uh, and this is kind of like that. But it also has a David Fincher. Not David Fincher, uh, David Lynch. It's a little bit of a Twin Peaks, David Lynch. A little bit of uh, Cohen Brothers. And then uh, a little bit of uh, X-Files. So it's like a mixture of... M. Night Shyamalan, you know, it's like, it's, it's a mixture of all of this. It's like a big a goulash of all of these things. You know. Actually, they're not that bad for Nintendo Switch. They're not actually bad. Therefore, she looks exactly the same as she did when she disappeared. In fact, she's in such good condition that we can even determine the murder weapon and cause of death. Hmm. Well... Francis York Morgan. So there was two Morgans. There's Francis Francis York. Oh, Ian. I just I just remember there was two characters. There was Francis York, and Francis Zack. There's two of them. Francis York and Francis Zack. It looks like uh, the Telltales. You know that Telltales? Um, what you call it? Uh, the Wolf Telltales and uh, Walking Dead Telltales games. It's like it has that kind of a graphics, like a Telltale Tales type of graphics, which is actually kind of cool. Not bad. Good for you. Even stranger is how unbelievably beautiful she looks. But she's not as beautiful as you. 
Aaliyah. Don't say that, Aaliyah. At first glance, few would guess she was a murder victim at all. She looks more like a piece of art, or a mythological figure from a painting. Yes. Well, if, you, if you're the fan of the first game, that you're gonna love, I mean, you're gonna, regardless, you're gonna play a sequel. Uh, you know, but if you never play the first one, if you don't understand the story, then, you know, it's gonna be difficult for you to get into this game. Uh, you really gotta play the first game to truly kind of get into it. I love the first one, so I'm a, I'm, I'm a fan. I'm a fanboy. You know, I'm gonna just say it right out front. I'm speaking from a fanboy point of view. Uh, I like Sweary. I like what he's doing. I like uh, he follows me on Twit on what you call it Twitter. Uh, I like his games. I like his style. So I'm a fanboy. So uh, speaking speaking just you know strictly from a fanboy point of view. This keeps getting better and better. Better and better? Better and better, yes, Aaliyah. Better and better. Isn't that right, my fairy? So what happened to York? I know there's two persons. There's Zack, this is Zack, and there's York. Is York out there somewhere? This is interesting. A corpse as beautiful as a goddess. Ah, he called her beautiful as a goddess. That will give us something. Did I like the Sherlock Holmes games? I never played it, honestly. I never played uh, Sherlock Holmes. Uh, I always wanted to, but I always end up playing something else. Sounds just like our story. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> yes. Yes. That went okay. Now I'm sure that Morgan's hiding something. Oh, of course he's hiding. There has to be something. You gotta wait for Ghost of Tsushima, man. If you finish Witcher, Ghost of Tsushima. Next Friday. White Knight, what is that? Oh, Sherlock Holmes, White Knight? Okay, I'll look into it. I pre-ordered a long time ago. I got the Deluxe Edition. Can't wait to unlock the uh, dynamic theme. And all the goodies and the soundtrack and oh man, I'm gonna have so much fun with that game, like with uh with the photos, taking the screenshot, making my own photos, sharing those photos, creating my own little videos. I'm gonna have a lot of fun with that game. The ghost of Tsushima Island. I may be able to get what I want if we go deeper into the documents. All right, let's look at the documents. Let's see. Hmm. Isn't there someone else you should have talked to? Before coming to us. Such as... We were unable to reach Patricia Clarkson. Patricia Clarkson? Who's that? Uh, Friday. Uh, Ju uh, July 17th, Friday. Patricia Clarkson, who is this? You look surprised. 
I thought you already knew. Hmm. After all, you visited Louisiana last week. Oh, shit. He did, last week. We assumed you met with her during your time there. Patricia. Maybe he did. But maybe he didn't. Maybe York did. You see, he didn't, but York did. His second personality. York did, he didn't. He met her through York. Are you guys following me? Are you guys following me? Are you guys not confused? Are you not confused? <laughs> yes, I finished to Louisiana. I finished the uh, layers of fear, putting all the paintings and all that shit, man. Oh yeah, that was a great fucking game. I I played it on the Xbox. I live stream it on the Xbox. I did. I live streamed that game on the Xbox uh, One S. I think. Dude, I have so many videos. 5,000 videos. Dude, I could take a vacation for a year or two years. Not make any videos for two years. Not stream anything for two years. And you guys will still have to go through my videos. 5,000. 5,000 videos. Not even PewDiePie. Not even PewDiePie. Cannot do it. Not even PewDiePie. Can reach that many not even dr side phil dark side phil from jersey from jay-z didn't he, didn't he move to washington yeah jay-z to mo to washington man got five thousand five thousand five fucking thousand videos and counting and counting that's a fact that you have to swallow and digest <laughs> Let's go. Not at 14 years. Fourteen years. You see, he didn't go, but Morgan York in a suit, younger younger version of him, the second identity of him, met Patricia. Zach Morgan didn't. It was York that met Patricia. I have no idea, honestly. I have no... I have, like, maybe five, six, or something like that. <clears throat> Is that so? We've been right here in our apartment this entire time. Because she doesn't know that she's talking to a second identity. Second person. Other person. York is the one who did all this other stuff solved the crimes talked to that uh patricia but she doesn't know that he knows but she does not that man is our witness i love that you guys are so confused you're like what the fuck's going on what the fuck's going on i know ian knows ian right you know what you know what's going on right <laughs> What's going on? Aren't you, Simon? He's right. Wait a minute. He didn't even take a single step outside on Christmas Eve. That's right, because he's a Zach Morgan. Morgan. Guten Morgen. Good morning. Hello, good morning, Zach Morgan. York is the one, the good-looking York is the one who did it. Walking around in New Orleans and doing all this God knows what shit. Haven't you not seen the split? Haven't you watched M. Night Shyamalan? Split, split, split personalities. They do exist. They're out there. And they're not mutants, but they do act like mutants. <laughs> I love that Ian is the only guy, Barcelona, who knows what I'm talking about. 
<laughs> what do I think about the mixed reviews about the PlayStation 5 new game case design? I don't have to think about it, Cameron, because I predicted it. Did you guys look at my community forums? I already showed you how it's going to look. I already pre this. I already pre vised in advance how's it going to look. And I showed you exactly how's it going to look. White and blue. Go check it out, guys. I already made those with uh, uh, the Gran Turismo 7, uh, Ghost of Tsushima, Cyberpunk, and uh, The Last of Us Part 2. I already predicted it predicted it I'm, i mean if you don't believe me guys go to my community forums like two weeks ago <laughs> i like it listen man guys i'm glad you uh i'm glad you said that cameron d but i went to the best buy today um just to see what's up i had my mask the whole thing you know gloves all that shit um Dude, everything was empty. The games, shelves empty. Movies, shelves empty. Everything was fucking empty. And I was like, what? Even the microphones were empty. Even the microwaves uh, were empty. Uh, even the, the, the coffee cup holders were empty. Even the Pokemon figurines were empty. Everything was fucking empty. I was like, what the fuck? What the fuck? The end of days, zombie apocalypse. Guys, physical media is dying. I hate to say it. I hate to be this, uh, the carrier of the bad news, but uh, we'll see less and less physical media, guys. We'll see less and less of physical media. Now, relax before you start hitting that dislike button. Just put your fucking pantyhose on. Put it back on. Relax. Don't get wet yet. It's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen tomorrow night. It's going to take some fucking time. Like 2026, 2027. But eventually, you'll see less and less and less and less and less, 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 less physical media. It's all going to be fucking digital cloud. Digital cloud. Digital cloud. Bunch of people agree with me on this. And I'm talking like important people. Like PhD level fucking ITT tech degrees and shit. They agree with me on this. They agree. This is a trajectory that it's going. So you'll see less and less of physical media. And now it's... The God is mocking me. Because just the thunder just hit. I'm just being honest, you know. I love physical media. Nobody loves physical media more than, than me. I was looking for this game. Couldn't find it. Went to the GameStop. We don't have it. Would you like a digital a gift card for eShop Nintendo? Oh, I said, no. Oh, why not? I said, no, I don't like the GameStop. But why did you come here? Because I was looking for this one fucking particular game. And I left the fucking GameStop. Went to the Best Buy. They don't have it. Went to the Target. They don't have it. Empty fucking shelves. Went to the Walmart. Empty fucking shelves. But they did have Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing was there. I can't fucking believe it. I said, Animal Crossing is here. Well, I'll be damned. <sighs> All right, let's continue. Sorry. For that, it's just, uh, I guess I don't know how to lie. That's my problem. I just tell people the truth. Just like I told you the truth about Dr. Disrespect. And now the YouTube is pissed at me. They're not going to put that video on algorithm. It's going to be stuck at 1.7 thousand views because uh, they don't like that I'm speaking the truth. That's why he was banned. Uh, guys, it's like Dr. It's like Dr. says... Wake up! Wake the fuck up! When you gonna fucking wake up? When you die of old age? Too fucking late. Wake up fucking right now. Yes, they do exist. They fucking exist. What do you think these monuments are? What do you think that fucking all these symbols are for? 
They fucking exist. Who do you think runs this shit? They exist. They do exist. They print money. They don't give a fuck about money. They create fucking money out of thin air. They fucking exist. I was approached by one of them, by few of them. I used to work for one of them. Told you about the Dietrich. They fucking exist. If you are a big influence, they don't want you talking this kind of stuff. I'm not a big influence. I can say this. Dr. Disrespect cannot say what he wants to say because he's a big influence. He's got investors. G Fuel. Esports owned by fucking Disney. And who is Disney? Illuminati. <sighs> Come on, guys. Like, if you're not going to wake up, fine. But I told you so. Let's move on. Which means that I didn't get to either. Wait, what do you say? Huh. <sighs> But that's because this guy knows that Zach, it's not York. York, it's a separate uh, identity. Zach never left this place. York, it's somewhere else. Are you positive about that? Of course. I took the liberty of checking some airline records. I don't know, Cameron D. We're going to find out uh, on Monday. All of this stuff we'll find out on Monday when they officially give the announcements of the price and the pre orders. All of that stuff will be there. Uh, right now, it's just everybody's just contemplating. No one really knows. So next week, Monday, all the answers will be there. And that's why I'm gonna live stream it, and uh, that's why I'm gonna live stream it live. So that way, when they give you the uh, the price point on both PlayStation Five physical media version and digital version, so that way you can pre-order. Here's what I know. Amazon's not going to charge you. Amazon will not charge you till till they start shipping that console. They will keep that card on hold. All your information will be put on hold. But they're not going to charge you $500 or even $50. They will not charge you any kind of deposit. There's no collateral. There's no collateral. They will not charge you until officially the game is I mean the the console is shipped so they will not charge you the day how do I know this well same situation with the Xbox one X Scorpio edition they didn't charge me till till October 31st October 31st is when the console was shipped and then it took a little while took what seven days eight days and they finally send it to me on the 7th of November 2017 and I and I've done this before I've done this before so I know that the Amazon will not charge you nothing until they actually ship the console I mean they're not gonna charge you $500 now I mean you, you don't have a console and they're gonna charge you. there's no collateral so you're good And that's why I love Amazon. That's why I love Amazon because they don't do any kind of collateral. You got to pay 50 down like like a GameStop. GameStop, you got to pay a 50. You got to put a deposit here. That's why I hate GameStop. GameStop is a ripoff. It's a big ripoff, man. Stay away from GameStop. I mean, swear to God, man. GameStop is the worst. Uh, if you want to bleed from the asshole... GameStop is the place they're going to shove the big dildo up your ass. 
and then you're gonna bleed from the asshole. Don't do the GameStop, man. GameStop. I don't even know how they are, how they are in business. Who is financing GameStop? How is it even fucking possible that this company is still running their store? Who is sponsoring them? Who is financing them? I can't fucking believe that they're still in business. After all the shit they have been accused of, gone through, how is it even possible that the GameStop is still in business? It's beyond me. Last Friday, the name Billy Bishop was listed on a morning flight out of Boston. Who is Billy Bishop? Who is Billy? Tell me, who is Billy? This is the fake name you used to use as an agent, isn't it? No! That was York! You see, Aaliyah doesn't know. Tell her, Ian! Ian Barcelona, tell her. Zach, it's hiding behind York. And York, it's hiding behind Zach. But she doesn't know that. She does know there's two identities. Two identities. <laughs> A mere coincidence. Hmm. If you don't want to bleed from your rectum, do not go to the GameStop. Do not proceed to go inside the GameStop store. And do not give them your credit card information. If you do that, you will be bleeding from your rectum all night long. All day long. Don't do it. Don't do it, man. Uncharted 2 is awesome. That was a great game, man. <clears throat> oh, it is awesome, dude. There's so many cool games. So many cool games on PlayStation now. Tons of games to play. Yes, multiple personality disorder. Yes. That's what we're dealing with here. What we're dealing with here. It's a multiple personality disorder. Estranged order. Not the New World Order, but the estranged order. Everybody's confused by this live stream. Well, you should be confused. That's the whole idea. That's the whole idea of this game, to be confused. Do not refuse. Don't be refused, just be confused. Oh, Dr. Sleep and Shining, hell yeah. Doctor Sleep was fucking awesome. Yet that's not all. Yeah, it does, man. I use the filmmaker mode on um, on a video games. It works fine. Low latency is on, free sync it's on, and the quality's good, man. You barely see the. You know how there's that grain. On The Last of Us Part 2 and that that ridiculous grain, the filmmaker mode tones it down a little bit. Do you know why? Because filmmaker mode takes all of these filters, disables all of the filters, including the motion flow, and gives you that room to breathe. And then it adjusts the tone of color along with the, uh, the picture settings. And I think sharpness is at the very minimum. And man... Looks, looks great. Dude, it's, it's a pouring rain over here behind me. That evening on the same day. What happened? A man with a large scar on his forehead allegedly purchased an 89 Cadillac from a small used car lot in Lucare. Hmm. Hmm. Did he now? Mm. He reportedly said he wanted something old, big, and strong. Old, big, and strong. Yes. I'm here. Come to me. Sit on my lap. Yeah. Welcome to my home. 
The owner of the car lot felt it was a strange order, so it's stuck in his mind. Hmm. Our world is filled with mysteries. Yes, it is. I highly recommend Director Scott Ian Barcelona. Uh, go to HBO Max, watch the Director Scott. It's a three hours and some minutes. It's pretty long, but it's fucking great, man. It is scary. Uh, it is very scary, dude. I'm not gonna spoil it, but uh, secrets, secrets, a lot of secrets out there, a lot, a lot, a lot of secrets. Dark, dangerous world. Shining was more psychological, you know. It's 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 a uh, the Shining. It's obviously classic by Stanley Kubrick uh, the way he portrayed the book of Stephen King uh, was remarkable this is a sequel to the book that he wrote Stephen King wrote the book first called Dr. Sleep and then it turned into a movie uh, they're both great actually uh, I gotta I mean of course the shining is classic it's a classic. But this is a good sequel. I have to say it was a pretty good sequel, though. I have to say. Pretty good sequel. Uh, granted, the first one, it's, you know, it's classic. You can't touch that. We're not talking about a remake. If, if Doctor Sleep was a remake of The Shining, then, okay, fine, fuck it. But this is a sequel. And uh, was done, uh, was a good sequel. I'll just say, good sequel. But uh, you gotta watch the movie to understand that. You know, listening to me right now is not gonna really convince you of anything. It's gonna make you curious, and that's good. But you gotta watch the movie to understand, oh, I understand why he's saying it's a good sequel. Uh, it's not the greatest movie ever made, but it's definitely a good sequel, and that's that's all you can hope for. That's the sequel you, Neil Druckmann, should have given us. A good sequel. Not SJW infested nightmare. And they always have the most bizarre timing. Hmm. Alright, let's continue with the game. No, it's exclusive to HBO Max. Scoob and Doctor Sleep, HBO Max. And uh, that latest movie uh, from Tom Hanks, it's on Apple Plus. This kind of sucks. If I want to watch something exclusive on Disney, I gotta pay. If I want to watch something exclusive on HBO Max, I gotta pay. If I want to watch something exclusive that's on Apple TV Plus, I gotta pay. Like, fuck, you gotta pay everywhere now. You wanna take a piss over here? Pay! You wanna take shit over here? Pay! You wanna breed over here? Pay. Pay. Incidentally. Yes. On the following day, an identical Cadillac was taken to a scrapyard in Trenton. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder why. Trenton, New Jersey. Well, I wouldn't say that it's total... I, I mean, I wouldn't say that it's trash. They do have a... Uh, pretty hefty library. They got pretty good amount of good movies. They have uh, South Park. For me, personally, South Park. I mean, fuck yeah, dude. If I got the entire seasons of South Park, I'm a happy fucking guy. If I got the entire library of South Park, but just for me personally, I'm a happy guy. 
but yeah, I agree. Not worth 15 bucks. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I agree on that. Uh, definitely not worth 15. No, 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 no. Not worth 15. But the good thing is I'm not paying 15. I got it for free. E, 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 e. Ah, 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 I got it for free. Why? Because I made a friend with the SJWE. <laughs> I'm just fucking with you guys. All right, let's go. I'm going to knock it off. Okay. Otherwise, we'll be sitting here for fucking ever. <laughs> We're never gonna fucking finish this shit. You can Let's find go. that type of car anywhere. I got multiple of them. It's doing it's doing good, but it's gonna take some time for people to find it. You know. All right, guys. Enough of chit chat. Let's get on with this fucking game. Isn't that right, my fairy? Hmm. Fairy. <laughs> Sec, Morgan. That chessboard looks rather old. And you can't even buy those ivory pieces anymore. Right. They were banned by the Sites Treaty. That was made in France in the 1900s. We know. It's in bad taste. But the weight of the ivory just feels so good in our hands. You play chess alone? You know what? This also reminds me of a True Detectives. Like the first True Detectives. Is that a crime? No. But it's a hard game to enjoy when you're all by yourself. But Aaliyah, he's not by himself. He's got a secondary friend called York. Imaginary friend called York. York! He talks to York all the time. But you don't know that, Aaliyah. He's probably just replicating famous games. Or trying to solve problems from a chess workbook. Right, Morgan? Yes. I may not look it, but I'm actually a bit of a chestnut myself. When I was in school, I used to pour over every <clears throat> issue of Chess Life, the magazine published by the U.S. Chess Federation. Hmm. Well, unfortunately, your guess is completely wrong, Agent Jones. What do you mean? What do you mean? He isn't replicating a famous game, nor is he solving workbook problems. There isn't a single chess book to be found in this apartment. And I didn't find any chess-related websites in his internet history. He was simply playing chess, all alone. Yes, Aaliyah, but that's what you think, Aaliyah. You can see his imaginary friend, York Morgan. So... London. Welcome. Welcome, London. What's wrong with that, Belle? And he keeps calling her Belle. Is that intentional? I think it is. I don't understand it. 
How could a single human being seriously play as both sides? I guess you didn't see the split. You haven't seen the M. Night Shyamalan movie? Split, split, split. Hmm? You just publicly confessed to stealing personal data. Hmm. Hmm. Seems like that's a much bigger problem. Really? Oh no. Everything was done in a perfectly legal manner. We simply happened to intercept a handful of data being sent out from an unknown origin. Hmm. I don't think so. Oh my god, he's playing her so badly. She really doesn't know. That there's two split personalities. Black and red PlayStation 5. Batwoman. Batwoman version. It's a Batwoman version, I'm telling you. <laughs> Batwoman. It's a Batwoman version. It has to be. They're making a Batwoman. They can make a Batwoman. Because uh, Xbox has acquired Warner Brothers games. So if the Batman, if the Batwoman comes, the Batwoman will come to Xbox. Black and red, hmm. Maybe Ghost of Tsushima. Ghost of Tsushima Special Edition. Patch update version. She's really trying to scare us. Did you hear that, my fairy? Serious nightmare fuel. I don't see anything. You may be wondering why we decided to unearth all these old files. Everything happens for a reason. The moment Lise Clarkson's body was found, we did the best we could to start our own local investigation. But there wasn't much we could actually investigate due to the damage caused by the hurricane. Katrina in 2005. Yeah, Katrina happened in 2005, so it's New Orleans. That's where York is. New Orleans. And New Orleans got, got struck in 2005, correct? Katrina. Yeah. Man, this game got me tripping now. Hold on. What are you guys talking about? Is Xbox Series X more powerful than PlayStation 5? Technically, it's... Uh, I wouldn't say powerful... But it's slightly faster. Slightly faster. Uh, with those extra two teraflops. But is it really going to make that much of a difference in the long run? Not really. It's not going to be a drastic difference. Um, in my opinion. Really, it's not going to be a, a drastic difference. Uh, they're both very similar.
Then we assume you also questioned everyone who worked in the warehouse. Hmm. Me too. Yesterday I was in a shadow. Like that Formula One. That was all shadow, dude. Uh, uh, everything you see me play from Stadia and PC, that was all shadow. Some people didn't even know. I kept it secret. They, they had no idea. Then I said, yeah, that's shadow, brother. It's all shadow. Of course. We question all the Clarkson Food Delivery Services employees who staff the warehouse and its owner. I agree, London. I agree with London. What he says is so true. And I think PlayStation 4 Pro has proven that. In a course of what? Uh, four years? Three and a half years? Four years? But we still have yet to obtain any key testimonies. Par for the course with a 14-year-old case, if you ask me. Mm. Not to mention how bad the timing was. Most of the employees were on vacation. So, you gave up on the investigation and came to see us instead. <laughs> Remember what happened, my fairy? That warehouse, that man, so incoherent, such a pain. <laughs> hey, are you talking about the guy who managed the vault where Lisa's body was found? Yeah, I think he started working there in 2005. Remember, Aaliyah? You said he was a pain to deal with, too. Hmm. So this is taking place 2018. 2018. And they're going as far as back as 2005. I got it. Large man, yes? No need to answer, if you don't want to. I mean, I haven't had any reasons to, to really turn on my X series, my Xbox One X. You know, I, I did it only to test uh, 120 hertz, free sync, 1440p, and it looks great. You know, I mean, I'm not going to lie. Uh, 120 hertz uh, capabilities on the Xbox One X with a free sync. Uh, looks freaking amazing uh, on the Xbox One X. But other than that, um, dude, like right now, I'm playing Nintendo. Last week, I played um, Iron Man VR. The week before that, for 12 days, I played The Last of Us Part 2, which is PlayStation. Why? Because they gave me exclusives. And next Friday, what am I playing next Friday? Ghost of Tsushima. Uh, Xbox has to give me a reason to turn on that console. I'd, I'd be more than happy to turn it on. I'd be more than happy to download something. But uh, you got to give me something, Microsoft. You got to give me something. You got to give me something. I'm sure you've already put him under surveillance. London, I think Sony's been uh, dominating since forever, since they started. You know, ever since 1998, they've been dominating. Even Dreamcast couldn't compete against Sony. Uh, they they dropped down. Uh, fuck. Even Nintendo has been kind of trailing next to them with a Wii. Xbox 360 finally found something to be a good competitor for a little while. But all that went down the hole with the, uh, you know, Red Ring of Death. And, of course, this whole Kinect crap. 
connect your TV 2013 nonsense um, always be connected to the internet all digital blah 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 cannot share the game mistake after mistake after mistake after mistake after mistake Sony's been leading since day one and then you have PlayStation VR very unique PlayStation VR experience and now you got PlayStation 5 and the PlayStation VR 2 I mean Sony's been leading they have no competitors guys this is the truth this is not me saying I'm not a fanboy clearly you can see I'm playing a fucking Nintendo uh, and I have all the consoles and everything but as a gamer as a somebody who is sitting on the sidelines and looking at this unbiasedly independently I can tell you they've been leading since since 1998 they've been kicking ass taking names when you look at their library of games PlayStation 1 PlayStation 2 PlayStation 3 PlayStation 4 no one can touch that nobody can touch that the only thing that can get that can can get close to it a little bit would be maybe Nintendo and Sega Nintendo and Sega like a second third place but in first place it's Sony man I mean look at these games do some re research do some research go back in time time capsule it's time for a time capsule go back in time and you're gonna see exactly that's the truth you know Yeah, Ratchet and Clank, and they're also doing a, uh, what was that, that other game, that other game uh, I'm thinking about, um, Crash Bandicoot, Crash Bandicoot, they're doing that as well, I mean, West Horizon, Horizon West, uh, Horizon West Frontier, I'm sorry, Horizon West Frontier, God of War sequel, most likely God of War sequel. Um, I mean, now things could change in the future. You know why? Because Sony. Here's why I think that you guys might be surprised a little bit. With, with the way things are going to go with the PlayStation 5. I think you might be disappointed because I know some of you guys are hardcore Sony fanboys and that's fine. Or if you're, uh, listen, if you're a fanboy, fine, whatever. I don't care. But here is the evolution. There's a good possibility that Sony will move to a different direction because they have nothing left to prove. They've been doing this for 25 freaking years, longer than 25 plus years. They've proven themselves. They have established themselves as a household name with the PlayStation. It is possible they might move on to the cloud gaming. They might move on digital only. They might move on uh, PC, put some of their games on a PC, cross-platform, similar to, to what the Xbox is doing. Uh, you might see that happening pretty soon. You're gonna see that PlayStation games exclusive coming to PC. Of course, you have to have a PlayStation Plus membership to do that. Maybe PlayStation Plus, whatever, to do that. But they're gonna change their directions, guys. They have to evolve. These companies have to evolve. They cannot beat the same drum forever. They have to evolve. Why? Because Sony has nothing left to prove. They've proven what it, everything they need to prove, they have proven successfully. What's the next step? Push forward with the cloud gaming, digital only, and of course, put their games on a PC. And that's awesome to be able to play some of these exclusive games on PC. Imagine Ghost of Tsushima on a PC. Fucking A. Fucking A. You know what I mean? So, I want you guys to... Uh, see, some of you are having this mindset from back in the days. 
You can't think like that. That mindset of back in the days doesn't apply anymore. You need a new mindset. You need a new mindset of how do I adapt to this new venture of, of new consoles that are coming out. How do I adopt to this new uh, evolving brand of PlayStation and Xbox and Nintendo? How do I adapt to it? Well, you'll have to adapt. Either A, you adapt to it to play their games or you don't play their games and you don't adapt to it. But they're going to evolve. These companies are going to evolve to a different direction. So I know you're excited. I am excited about PlayStation 5, but I also understand these are different times. This is not 2000 PlayStation 2, okay? It's a different time. And uh, things are going to be different, as they should be. I mean, it's 2020, for crying out loud, 2021 coming up. So, yeah, things are going to evolve to a different direction. And that's okay. I have no problem. People ask me, do you have a problem playing uh, PC games uh, on a, from PlayStation exclusives? No, I have no problem. I have no problem playing Death Stranding on a PC. I have no problem playing Horizon Zero Dawn on a PC. Actually, as a matter of fact, I want to see how it looks with the real-time ray tracing. I have no problem with that. I'm okay with that. I'm fine with that. As far as I know, the PlayStation 5 will have PlayStation 4 backward compatibility. As far as I know. <clears throat> Textbook FBI protocol. Morgan's right. Everything happens for a reason. <clears throat> Even this messy room. There must be a reason for it. I don't think that's gonna happen, Tyler. Uh, PlayStation 3s will stay on a cloud. Uh, because it's just difficult for AMD to mimic and emulate that emotion that, that chip, that specific chip that they were using on PlayStation 3. Okay, it's just gonna be difficult for them to mimic that and to uh, code that it's not gonna happen I would love to see that happen but I don't think it's gonna happen what's up Mike how you doing from Oklahoma City here it's thunder and it's raining man I thought it's tornadoes coming or some shit how you doing brother how you enjoying this uh, 2020 so far what a year hmm? what a what a year Wasn't it? Was it the Japanese, the Sony's? They created uh, the chip, right? Was it IBM or Sony? Sony created that chip uh, on on PlayStation Three, right? Was it Sony? Especially when it comes to those strangely tidy spots, they're practically begging me to question them. Oh my God! We've been talking for like two hours, sitting here for two hours. What kind of X-File pilot episode is this? <laughs> oh, it was... 2020, it's such a... Straight out of uh, Cohen's Brothers, uh, straight out of Walking Dead scenario, some kind of fucked up year. You know what this year reminds me of? The Outer Limits. Twilight Zone and The Outer Limits. Do you guys remember The Outer Limits TV show back in the days on Showtime? Uh, we're talking like 1993, 1994, 1995. Uh, the Outer Limits. Dude, this is straight out of Out of Limits. Like some shit out of Out of Limits TV show. Oh, The X-Files, of course. The X-Files. What's up, Mr. Urban? But well, listen, man, we'll get through it. How do I know we'll get through it? Because I said we'll get through it. That should mean something. Tell everybody, Mr. 4K said, I don't care how the dark things are, the dark cloud that it's coming over our heads. I don't give a shit how crazy everything is. I don't care what you have seen. I don't care how shocked you are. I don't care how scared you are. 
it will get better. Because I said so, it will get better. Okay? I'm communicating with the aliens. We have to go through this shit. It's a part of the deal. We have to go through it. Just hang in there. Put on a fucking seatbelt. Be okay. Alright? But just hang in there. Alright? We'll be alright. And that's that. That's all there is. And that's, that's how you do the speech. Without reading a teleprompter. Am I ready for the Microsoft show? Uh, not really, Mike. I'm, I'm more ready for uh, Sony on Monday. I'll be live streaming Sony. Uh, Microsoft, I can't do Microsoft because I won't be home. Because I got to go somewhere on Thursday. And I don't have time to do a uh, uh, live show for Thursday, the July 23rd. Because uh, Microsoft has to put it on Thursday. Thursday. The worst possible time. Do it on Friday. Do it on Saturday. How about Saturday and Sunday? How about Saturday and Sunday, Microsoft? No, but let's do Thursday noon. Thursday noon. The worst freaking time. The worst time. The worst possible time. They could have fucking picked out of all the times on, on this planet. So, unfortunately, this Monday, Sony, this Monday, don't screw me over, Sony. Don't push your date to Wednesday. Oh, dude, I'm going to be so fucking pissed if it's Wednesday, 5, 5 p.m. Please, please, please don't fuck me like this. Don't fuck me like this, Sony. I've been a loyal fan. Don't fuck me like this. I don't want to bleed from my asshole. Don't fuck me like this, Sony. Make it Monday. Make it Monday. All right? Enough. I don't want to bleed from my fucking asshole. Don't even need a colonoscopy anymore. You already did a fucking colonoscopy on me 50 fucking times. Don't fuck me this time. Sunday. Monday. I want it to be Monday. Fuck Sunday. Make it Monday. Monday, 5 p.m. Monday, 5 p.m. What's wrong with that? Nothing. Monday, 5 p.m. It's good for me. And that's all that, that needs to be good for. If it's good for me, forget everybody else. I don't care. I'm a selfish prick. It's good for me. I'm not ble bleeding from the asshole at 5 p.m. So make it 5 p.m. Monday. This coming Monday, July 13th. So I can pre-order the son of a bitch. Okay? So I can click pre-order. <laughs> no, they're going to fuck me in the ass. I know. They're going to use a double dildo. They're going to shove it in there. They're going to go all the way. I know. All right, let, let's continue with this fucking game. <laughs> We've been sitting here for two fucking hours. Oh, God. <sighs> How do I look? Stage four progressive malignant tumor. Oh, he has the tumor. He's dying. Poor guy. How do humans behave when they know death is just around the corner? And what if that human is also a high-functioning sociopath? Maybe he's not afraid of dying. Maybe. Hold on, what is this? Pile of DVDs. Let's go check that out. No, this is a sequel to a very interesting, bizarre... Uh, game called uh, Deadly Premonition Director Scott that I played on uh, PlayStation 3 a stinking indulgence and a massive DVD collection Look, looks like he's got a Bigfoot there's a Bigfoot over there Bigfoot uh, movie what else he has you must live a very comfortable life. We're retired, remember? Retired in your 40s. 
What the fuck? Is this game about me? Am I? Is this is me? This is how I end up? What the fuck? <laughs> I'm envious. This game is secretly made about Mr. 4K and his imaginary friend. What the fuck? But who doesn't love movies, Belle? Uh, who doesn't love movies? That's a good question. I think everyone loves movies. I'm not a fan. What? You're not a fan. But what if it was a bat woman? What if it was a bat woman? Let's just say it was a bat woman. Bunch of chicks in there. No no guys, no dudes. There's a one dude, he's evil, and you guys kill him. And you win, and you celebrate, and you have big orgy. Would you like that Batwoman movie? Tell me, Aaliyah. Oh, that won't do. Dude, this is me. This is Mr. 4K, dude. I think Sweary made a, mo made a game about me. Holy fuck, that's why he put it on Nintendo. Thank you, Sweary. For making a game about me. This is very sad and depressing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. You should dedicate all the free time you have to watching movies. It's practically an unwritten law. Catwoman. Michelle Pfeiffer. Hell yeah. Michelle Pfeiffer back in the days. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Hey, wasn't wasn't she in um there was a movie back in the days, she was a teacher or substitute teacher, uh with Coolio, right? Coolio was in it. Uh I think it was Coolio. Coolio was in it. What was it called? Something mind, mindful minds or whatever. I can't fucking remember the name of the movie. But she was in it. Dangerous Minds. Yeah, Dangerous Minds. Yeah, yeah. That was fucking great, man. And then she did The Wolf with uh, Jack Nicholson. You can't handle the truth. Here comes Johnny. Maybe we should take him to a doctor. <laughs> Jack Nicholson, fucking A, man. He's great. Films guide us. Yes, man. Dangerous Minds. Coolio. Great fucking movie, man. Those those are classics, man. Listen. We, like, guys, there's nothing really great. To, uh, I hate to, I hate to do this again. And please... I'm not trying to pick on this generation. I'm simply saying. When you look at 1980s. 1990s. Even early 2000s. This generation really got nothing. Really nothing. You can't even hold a glass of water. To the original movies. Original TV shows. Original music. Original everything. You can't even hold a glass of water to what we had in the 80s and 90s. Can't hold a glass of water. Just can't. Just can't. Simply can't. Yeah, I mean everything. Oh my, even the late 70s. Even the 70s, the movies were great. The Bullet with Steve McQueen. Are you fucking kidding me? That famous chase... With, uh, what was it, uh, Shelby Mustang and Dodge Charger in San Francisco? That chase scene? You can't fucking touch that. That was fucking classic. You know, all of those movies. 
a, a, an American werewolf in London. The Thing, John Carpenter, The Thing. Uh, I mean, the list goes on and on, man. I mean, like, look, if we go down this list again, we're going to be sitting here with uh, Zach Morgan till midnight. Till midnight, we'll be sitting here talking about those movies. This, uh, look, sorry, but no sorry. This generation, you guys got nothing. 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 No competition. Zero. Zilts. Zero. Nada. Niet. Nishta. Nothing. Kaput. Nothing. Films are filled yeah, with Civil every Bullet, important Stephen life King. lesson yeah. there is. Point Break, Lethal Weapon, one, two, three, four. Was there a four? Yeah, there was a four. Enter the Dragon. I mean, come on, man. Bruce Lee, the story. Bruce Lee, the story. The Dragon story. What was it? Uh, dude, I mean, come on. Even The Soldier, the movie called The Soldier... That, um, what's his name was in it? Fuck. Uh, Kurt Russell was in it. Even that movie was fucking badass. Brandon Lee was in it. Brandon Lee also played in, um, The Bruce Lee, The Story. Directed by, uh, Rob Cohen, the guy who did The Fast and the Furious, the first Fast and the Furious in 2001. Um, Man, listen, man, we got to stop doing this. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing to, to even think about doing this. We're never going to end. It's never going to end. We can go on forever. Forever. Universal. Yeah, keep going, guys. That's it. Just type it in. I mean, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. And then people get mad at me. You were just shitting all over this generation. That's not fair. I said... From my point of view, it's fair. From your point of view, it's not fair because you think that your shit is the best shit and there's nothing better, anything better than what you have. That's not true. There's 30 years, 40 years plus of greatness that this generation is missing. Is that so? Yes, Aaliyah Davis, you missed so much in 40 years. I cannot tell you how much you missed. So much. You ever seen the Pulp Fiction? No. You ever seen the Reservoir Dogs? No. Hmm. For example, they live. Yes. Have you ever seen the movie by John Carpenter, They Live? I didn't think so, Aliyah. Because you're not into movies. Because you're into... Me Too. Me Too movement. Me Too SJW. For me and you. They live. He just... Look, he just said it. This move... No, this... Fuck! This game, it's about me. Thank you, Sweary. He put me in the game. Without even telling me. I gotta contact him. Tom Berenger, Sniper. Tom Berenger, Platoon. Platoon! Anybody remember Platoon? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's a difficult movie to watch. You know. But uh, still, a fucking great movie. Ernest Goes to Jail. Yes. Born on the 4th of July. JFK. With Kevin Costner. I mean, do I need to fucking go on? Dances with the Wolves. Jesus H. Christ. I, I mentioned that. I mentioned the thing. Look, man. It's just... Sorry. Millennials. I'm actually no sorry. I'm not sorry, Millennials. Uh... You guys have failed across the board. No competition. No competition. The big F across the board. No competition. Zero. Zero competition. Like, zero. There's nothing there. Nada. Zilt. Zero. Niet. 1988. Directed by John Carpenter. Yes. Thank you. 
That's right. Yes, Whopper was only uh, called a big boy. No, no, really. There was a no. They used to call him a big boy, uh, a burger. And you can have it like this, this gigantic fucking burger. You can have. And what was the uh, what was the gas? Uh, what was the a gallon of gas? Was like what twenty five cents? Gallon of gas was it twenty five cents or less than that? It was it ten cents? Right, a gallon. <clears throat> Fuck no. Today, today you have to pay for HBO Max, $15. Today you have to pay for Apple Plus. Today you have to pay for Amazon. You have to pay for Netflix. You have to pay for this. You have to pay for that. Um, you want to watch an extra more sports channels, you have to pay extra for that here. Uh, I mean, today everything you got to pay. Pay on top of paying. And now the video game is going to be $70. $70. It's okay. But that's okay. We got some more good news. Not only are the games going to be $70, but on top of $70, we're going to put collector's editions to be $150, $130. I know you want to pay $130, $150. Why not? You're already paying 70. What's going to kill you to pay another, I don't know, 60, 70 dollars? It's not going to hurt you. You'll be fine. That film taught us a valuable lesson. Yeah, you know what, man? That's the only thing that's... There's the only silver lining is the, I guess, the porn. It's free, but the porn has become so uh, nonchalant these days. I swear to God, even if there was a, if they were showing uh, porn on like a subway, when you ride a subway, people wouldn't pay a fucking attention. No one would fucking care. I think porn has become like nonchalant, like whatever. Like nobody gives a shit. You know, it's like seriously, you could have like a bunch of uh, porn magazines laying around the street. No one would fucking pay attention. No, really, I mean, it's just like nonchalant these days, you know, like... Oh, look, there's a tits and ass. Oh, okay. What else is new? Oh, look, she's going deep. What else is new? Oh, look, man, she just went all the way down. Downtown. Every hole's plugged in. What else is new? Like, nobody gives a shit, you know. Look, it's the cream pie. Apple pie. What else is new? No one gives a shit, man. Nah, nobody gives a shit, man. It's like, it's like, eh. Everything's been done, sucked, fucked, pissed on, shit on. Everything has been used and abused. It's become like nonchalantly, like robotically normal. Like, eh, okay. Eh. I guarantee you, if the UFOs comes in tomorrow, Big armadas of UFOs, spaceships. People are going to be like, eh, what are you going to do? I mean, they were going to show up anyway. So, uh, I got to go watch the, uh, got to go check the, uh, there's, a, there's a history channel, uh, uh, American Pickers. I got to watch that. I mean, uh, what are you going to do? Don't bother me about that. <laughs> like, people don't give a shit, man. Nonchalantly, we don't, I, you could have werewolves and vampires fighting on the streets. Oh, uh, yeah, that looks interesting. Did you lock the doors? Keep that shotgun there I, with a silver bullet, just in case. Let's go watch uh, Price is Right. Close the door. Nah, people don't give a fuck. No, really, I mean, it's all nonchalant. Nonchalant. Even right now, people don't give a fuck. I mean, it's just whatever. Welcome to 2020 and beyond. Yes. So, let's continue with this weird, <laughs> weird... No, this game is normal. It's not weird. This game it's about me. I'm Zach Morgan. Here we go. Always put on your sunglasses before a fight. You know, you got a point. If they live, you have to put on the sunglasses before you fight.
Of course. They had the phones out. They're like, dude, do you know how many views I'm going to get? Bro, his head is de decapitated. Dude, see the bl pool of blood, man? Bro, I never seen the body separated like that, bro. Here, I'm going to make some money off of this, bro. Bro. People going to click. They want to see. Welcome to humanity. Estranged humanity. I mean, what's normal? How do you define normal? It's a, is it even in a dictionary anymore? Does the normal even exist in a dictionary? And how do you define normal? Seriously, I always say to people, Oh, dude, it's not normal. It's not normal. I said, define normal. Any day now, I'm waiting. What is normal? How do you define normal? It's crazy, man. Like, uh, the other day, I saw the this guy was just walking around the street, crossing the street with his daughter, walking and just holding, you know, holding hands with his daughter, walking the street, crossing the road. It was somewhere in Brooklyn, and then this car pulls, and when he turns around, the window rolls down, and this uh, whoever this individual is just shots him right in front of his daughter. How do you define normal? How do you define normal? Where do you draw the line on normal these days? People have become robotic. Everything's acceptable. We have become robotic. And that's that. Now let's move on. I can hear a pin drop. It got awfully quiet. Movies teach us about everything we need to know. <clears throat> Movies teach us about everything we need to know. Hmm. This is an interesting point. But don't you think that maybe Illuminati, they purposely made these movies. Illuminati's, they purposely made these movies to make us accept violence, sex, greed, all of the above, to make us accept that as a normal. Why? Because they worship the Luciferian Satanism. Maybe this is exactly where they want us to be. Maybe that's what these movies were trying to tell us, and the Illuminati's were trying to test us to see if we can figure that out, luckily there was only a handful of people who figured that out, but majority sheeps, meh, meh, they didn't figure that out. And I'm glad that Dr. Disrespect has woke up and realized, oh shit, oh shit. Guys, when you wake up, when you finally realize what's really going on, dude, Nothing will be the same for you. When you finally awake and you raise this bullshit that you've been, you know, brainwashed in your brain for decades. When you finally wake up and you r restore your hard drive, your memory, you're never going to be the same. You're never going to be the same. Christmas is not going to feel the same. Your birthday is not going to feel the same. The holidays are not going to feel the same. You waking up in the morning is not going to feel the same. You going to the bed is not going to feel the same. Nothing's going to feel the same. When you truly awake. There you go. A little Matrix style for you. A little Matrix style. I told you I'm going to take you down a rabbit hole. I told you. Hold on. Alex Jones is calling. Alex Jones is calling. Holy shit, bro. Is it Alex Jones? Ring, ring. Ring, ring. I told you. There's no Illuminati. It's all Illuminati here. <laughs> all right, let's go. I learned about the right way to eat frozen pizza from Cobra. It's one of Stallone's best films. It's all a pizza gate. Illuminati. George Soros. I knew it. 
And that snake, Joe Rogan, snake, I knew. <laughs> uh, it is, man. It's turning into Alex Jones. I learned about the right away to eat frozen pizza from Cobra. Frozen pizza from Cobra. Did he eat a frozen pizza? I gotta look into that. I gotta watch Cobra, Sylvester Stallone. Did he really eat pizza, frozen pizza in Cobra? Oh look, it's Ozzy Osbourne. I really get it. That guy, 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 Hyper trains for 2020. Hyperloop. Yes, I have heard about it. I know. I've been waiting for you. Welcome to my home. Step inside. I prepared a dinner for you. I'm Dracula. I lived for thousands of years. <gasps> Since 1400s. Alright, let's go with this. Let's knock it off. Let's move on. There's a bunch of milk carts. Well, what's going with the milk? What is this? A bunch of milk up behind them. Before that, I wouldn't be caught dead trying to eat frozen pizza. Somebody needs to look it up. Did Sylvester Stallone in Cobra eat frozen pizza? Did he? Did he now? I thought it wasn't fit for human consumption. Vlad Dracul. But that film changed my life Cobra hold on Sylvester Stallone Cobra changed your life how Simon that has nothing to do with the film nothing to do with the film just talking about pizza hmm pizza pizza gate pizza gate oh shit pizza gate You guys hear about Pizzagate? Hmm? 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 There's the documentary. I want you guys to look it up. It's on YouTube. It's called Out of Shadows. Pretty, pretty interesting. Out of Shadows. All right, let's look around. Hold on a second. There's got to be stage four progressive malignant tumor. There's got to be something else. How do humans behave when they know death is just around the corner? And what if that human is also a high functioning sociopath? What is this? Another strangely clean spot. Hmm. 
Mr. Morgan, may I ask you a question purely out of curiosity? Sure. Ask. If it makes you uncomfortable, just let me know. And I'll retract it. Bell, what's wrong? Why does he keep calling her Bell? Why? All right, Mr. Urban, be careful out there. The burger can wait. <laughs> Burger can wait. Is it a, is it a, hold on. Is it a, um, bacon? Is it a bacon burger? Is it a bacon? Because, dude, if it's a bacon, hell yeah. Bacon with cheese. You sure put a lot of effort into that approach. It's a question about death. Death. What about death? I am the death. This is my home. About this body? Yes. Are you afraid? I lived for thousands of years. Why should I be afraid now? What's coming? Whatever is coming, I shall face it. <laughs> Think carefully about why we're smoking this, then ask us again. Hmm. This is good, getting super bizarre and interesting. James, are you paying attention, James? Honestly, we're not afraid. Rather, we find it intriguing. Oh, 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 ah, 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 and I thought my jokes were bad, hmm? Hmm. James, this is getting more creepier and creepier. This game is just, dude, it's hitting on all kinds of notes. It's... Man, you have to watch this again, this first part of a live stream when it ends tonight. You got you to gotta pay attention to this, man. You got to... Some, something's weird going on here. It's almost like this game, it's listening to our conversations. And it's uh, mirroring our conversations to what we're saying right now onto the game. We were talking about the movies. They started talking about the movies. We talk about the 80s specific, the Thing movies. He was talking about the Day Live. And then Cobra. Telling you, it's getting, it's definitely getting some strange vibes with this game, dude. But let's let's go through it. We'll we'll, we'll survive. Just hang in there, guys. Let's go. <sighs> Intriguing. I don't know about that, Aaliyah Davis. Is it really intriguing? Mm. 
Yes. Hmm. Francis York Morgan. Hyperloop trains, how fast would you think they would go, Mr. 4K? Fast, like a bullet train. Bell? Yes. Have you ever been to the Grand Canyon in winter? Well, that's an experience. Imagine riding with those kind of trains. Whoosh, whoosh. You're going to feel some zero Gs for sure. You're going to feel like you're floating. And if you definitely, if you ate something, you're going to throw up. You're definitely going to throw up on that train. <laughs> it's going to be fucking crazy. I need a new chair, man. Listen to this. <laughs> Dude, for two and a half hours, man, we've been sitting here and talking as long as saving Private Ryan length of a movie. Bro. We've been talking here on this level as long as the Saving Private Ryan movie. <clears throat> it is no it's also no 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 it's better than that it's um it's a saxophone listen Hold on. <laughs> that's that's what it sounds like, bro. Hmm. Yes. Good morning. Is Australia. Dobro jutro. Dobro jutro, gospodine. Is Australia. You have OLED B7? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Man. I'm just going to say it like this. Buy it. Yes. Big capital letters. Yes. Yes, it's time. More, th more than, than it's time. It's like extremely urgent. I would put it like this. Extremely urgent for you to upgrade to C10. Like extremely, extremely urgent. Mandatory, extremely urgent for you to upgrade. To C10. I would love that, man. I, I would love to be able to go to like 60 minutes here, there, show up anywhere in in, in, a, in a States. Okay. James, if it's 800 miles an hour, how long it would take for me from here to Washington State? Ooh, I, we, we got to multiply that, man. Shit. 800 hours an hour hold on let's say six hours really 40 no 45 to 60 minutes holy fuck 45 to 60 minutes dude that's fucking awesome imagine that i see you in an hour i go to washington eh? dude I'll, I'll see you uh tonight at uh, nine o'clock and I'll see you again tomorrow morning, or you come in back tomorrow afternoon. Dude, everybody will be visiting everybody, just like that. That's crazy, dude. Oh, like 20 minutes. I think 15 minutes. Bro, 15 minutes. No, 12 minutes, 15 minutes. You'll see, uh, you can come visit me, bro. 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 15 minutes 
Fucking, that'd be awesome, dude. Fucking awesome. I would love that shit, man. How cool is that, man? Dude, I'm I'm loving the future now. There's some positive things happening in future. It's not all, yeah. There's some some negative shit, but uh, you see, there's technology is positive. There's a silver lining. Technology is the silver lining. So technology is the silver lining. So there's some positivity here. You see, dude. Fuck yeah, dude. Every weekend, bro. You show up at the South Beach, and then the, the next weekend I show up at uh, Washington State, and then we go out, you know, hiking, looking for Sasquatches and shit like that, you know, leaving apples for the Sasquatches and having a good time, you know, putting it like on uh, live streaming that shit with the infrared cameras to see if a Sasquatch is going to bring out his big hairy arms to pick up the, the apple and shit. So kind of fucking cool, man. Yeah. One hour? Dude. Fucking A, man. From Rhode Island to West Palm. Hell yeah, bro. One hour. Fucking A, dude. That would be awesome, dude. No. What she said? No. In the dead of winter, the Grand Canyon is terribly cold. Actually, that's true. Colder than you could imagine. Hmm. A cold that no photograph could ever express. Oh, absolutely, man. Like the St. Helen uh, mountain, right? Uh, mini LED, I don't know. Um, I have to see it first. You know, I got to spend time with it. Uh, same thing with the micro LEDs. You know, it, it, it. first we have to put our hands on it. We have to mess around with it. We have to play around with it before anybody can make any kind of like uh, judgment on that, you know. Uh, but you have to remember, it's still. Yeah, you can't you see. That's the thing, man. I always tell people. People ask me about micro LEDs. I said, dude, same thing with the micro LEDs. Uh, no one has really messed around with micro LEDs. No one was allowed to go into Samsung Labs to, to... And those who are working in the Samsung Lab, they under strict orders not to talk about micro LEDs. Um, so same thing with, um, with mini LEDs. I don't know. When it comes out, when I, when I see it, I'll let you know. Oh, he's more than a little pale. He's super pale. The sun. <laughs> Powerless. And the temperature drops below zero. Hmm. Drops below zero. That's interesting. Hold on. Right in the middle of the day. Hmm. Meaning... Meaning, um, it's cold. <laughs> Meaning. It's cold. It's very cold. Like, so cold that I can't even explain how cold. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, bro. Let's just... Well... As long as the coronavirus will go away. You can't really understand something until you experience it for yourself. Hmm. 
You know what, Francis Zach Morgan? You making too much sense to me. Fifteen hundred miles an hour. Oh, they have to put you to sleep, dude. No, people would have to be uh, under sleep or something. I don't know. Then they have to be woken up when they arrive at the station. Uh, I think it'd be like that, you know, because uh, yeah, some people will have a fucking heart attack. Um, I think you have to be put to sleep. No, really, dude. Like, they'll put you to sleep and then you wake up. It's like going under for the surgery, prep for the surgery. Kind of same shit, you know. Like, they put you to sleep. You know. Anastasia. Oh. If you want to learn more about us, you need to gain more experience. Ah, see, he's telling her, if you want to learn more about me and York Morgan and our split personalities, you need to gain more experience. So you see what he's doing? He's letting Aaliyah know that, hey, I'm not that easy. I'm not going to tell you everything you, you want to know. You have to earn my trust. You have to earn my respect in order for you to know. That's crazy, dude. Empty box. Do you like fresh vegetable juice? Why would you think that? There's a juicer in your sink that hasn't been washed yet. Of course. Half-Life. Oh, yeah, dude. Big time. Of course. Since 1999, 2000. Was it 2000? Yeah, yeah. Was it 99 or 2000? Or what the fuck was it? 2000? I think it was 2000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Half-Life. And do I smell the faint fragrance of baked beans? You didn't use much salt, did you? Oh, it was 98? Okay. What are you implying? You just told me that you find impending death to be intriguing. Oh, I already did, James. I already played the Alex. Uh, I did a live stream on it, and uh, I got to the uh, train station, uh, and I got stuck at this one level. I have to figure out these power lines, where they go, and uh, and whatnot. But uh, yeah, I I have it. I played it. Um, freaking amazing experience. Uh, I did a live stream on it uh, in March. Was it March? Yeah, yeah. I think the, the yeah the video is still there. I still have it. It's still there. You have to go back in March and look for that video. Um, I I got man stuck. I got stuck man at this one uh, level. I remember it clearly where you have to figure out how this. Um, it was like a puzzle. You have to make sure that the, that the weight of this car falls down with all of this um, extra stuff that it has in the back and all that extra stuff that's on the back has to fall down to pull the weight up for this door to open it was like this um a uh, puzzle that i got stuck on there yes half-life 2 uh played that played the um uh home world I was kind of busy playing Homeworld. Was a Homeworld, yeah, Homeworld. I was playing Homeworld. 
And then after that, I was busy, of course, playing Half-Life. That confused me. When I look around your room... What do you see? All I can see are the many ways in which you're resisting death. Hmm. Hmm. Holly MVA treatment, highly concentrated vitamin C IVs, Hmm. Fresh vegetable juice. Vegetable protein without salt. Hmm. Gallons of vitamin D milk for fat and calcium. Hmm. The ambivalence, yes. What? Two contradictory emotions, mixing, coexisting together. An adult, mature mind is never satisfied with only one response. Hmm. Oh yeah. We could go up to um, Atlantic City. Yeah, Atlantic City, man. Hell, we could go to Vegas, man. Fuck, we could do better. We could go to Vegas, man. Be in Vegas... Uh, under what 40 minutes vegas 45 minutes i don't know maybe one hour depending from where you're coming for you maybe it's closer for you james i think it'd be less than that because washington state and las vegas you know nevada shouldn't be that long you know it'd be much quicker for you it's common sense isn't that right, my fairy? Why is he calling her Fairy Bell? <laughs> oh my god, this repeating loop of music is gonna kill me. Mr. Morgan. Yes. Aliyah Davis, Bell, Fairy. I found several spots in this room that look strangely clean. And what does it look like? Uh, why does it look like a shape of a pyramid? What's going on here? Why does it look like a shape of pyramid? Do I think that the uh, Nicolas Cage is a good actor? Yeah. I mean, he proven himself, you know, uh, in that, was it Raising Arizona? Uh, man, Con Air, The Rock, 8, was the 8 millimeter? Uh, Face Off, Con Air, a uh, bunch of fucking movies, dude. National Treasure, uh, um, and of course, there's a movie called, um, oh my god, it was uh, Samuel Jackson, Samuel Jackson, and the other guy that was in, uh, in CSI Miami, I forgot his name, uh, what was the name of the movie, uh, fuck man, his father owns the club, but he runs the club, and uh it was like very muscular and, and buffed fuck what was the name of the movie he was in that movie as well uh fuck what was
was the name of the movie? Kiss of Death. Kiss of Death. Yeah. No, he's a good actor, man. I mean, he's a fucking legend, dude. Nicolas Cage. Yeah, dude. You know. People who talk shit about Nicolas Cage. All right. What do you've got, right? Let me see you do what he did. In, in, in 30 years. 30 plus years. Right? I always, I always say that to people. When people start shitting on Nicolas Cage, they say, okay, let me see what have you done. He has done a bunch of movies. Uh, pretty good movies, too. So it's like... Yeah. yeah, Gone in 60 Seconds. He was in that. He was in that shit. Uh, Nicolas Cage is fucking awesome. Nicolas Cage is awesome, dude. Fuck yeah. Nick Cage. I'll watch... I don't care, dude. I'll watch anything with Nicolas Cage. I think uh, lately he's been giving some shitty movies, nothing to work with, you know, uh, shitty scripts, and it's not his fault because uh, he's giving some shitty scripts with a shitty director, low budget, straight to DVD, uh, working with a bunch of shitty actors with no talent, so he's got nothing to work with. It's not his fault, it's just fuck. I got nothing to work with here. Like a bunch of amateurs and a bunch of amateur fucking directors, writers, giving me the shitty movie, the shitty role, but they're gonna pay me, and I need money. Uh, if we can get back to, like, working with Ridley Scott, or, um, all of these other directors, you know, maybe, who knows, maybe he can do something with Quentin Tarantino, uh, Robert Rodriguez, or maybe something with, uh, like I said, Ridley Scott. Or who else we got? Let me see. Uh, I don't know. I mean, there's a bunch of other directors he could work with, you know. But but lately he's been giving shitty roles, you know. Wind talkers. I think he should come back with John Woo. I really think. Nicolas Cage should make a comeback with John Woo. Him, John Woo, Nicolas Cage, and uh, Ed Harris could do something together in a John Woo film. And Ed Harris plays a bad guy. And uh, I think it would fucking work, dude. I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. I don't know. Whatever. I know Ed Harris is old, but he can still do his thing. I'm just throwing some shit out there. Uh, you know, I don't know. Or something like that, man. Did you tidy up a bit because you knew we were coming? So... Those are... Sanctuaries. They've existed from the start. Sanctuaries. Hmm. That's right. Sacred places. Hovels for pure souls, if you will. Were there originally objects in those hovels? Something you didn't want us to see. The soul's still there. We haven't touched a thing. But we know you can't see anything. Hey, Simon. Don't touch the sanctuary. Uh, hmm. s sorry. <coughs> That's a sanctuary. Don't ever touch it again. You've been watching us for four and a half years, and you couldn't even figure that much out? Uh, my bad. It's my first time actually coming inside, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You're earning far more than you deserve, then. Interesting. What were you doing all day in that black suburban? We thought wiretapping was your specialty. Don't tell me. Crossword puzzles. 
Wow, dude, he's reading all of them. What do you think, my fairy? Four and a half years. All that time. And what does he have to show for it? It's <laughs> so many to me. <laughs> Crossword puzzles? No way. Come on, I thought you knew. I'm a Sudoku guy. Agent Jones. Oh, right. He's completely taking control of the conversation. At this rate, we'll never get anywhere. I need to press him some more. Agent Jones? Did you find the files? Oh, Greenville case. That's the one we need to go through. Greenville. That's the one that's important. That's the one from the first game. Mr. Morgan, do you recognize these files? Whoa! Whoa! Ow! We told you. That's a sanctuary. Let him go! Assaulting an FBI agent is an obstruction we told of you. justice! We told you! Go! Ah! Stay back! Stay back! Sanctuary! Die! Surround it! Mr. Morgan? Cut my finger with that can opener this morning. I thought I stopped the bleeding, but it seeped through. How could I be so stupid? Interesting. Everything should be fine now. I'm sorry for being so careless. I made sure to read through your file and learn about your condition. The color red. Such an unusual thing to fear. Please, accept my deepest apologies. I, I'm sorry, oh my too, God. Morgan. I told you this game is wicked. I don't know what I was thinking. I'll never touch one of your sanctuaries ever again. <laughs> Because Greenwill, that's where, that's where the whole thing started in the first game. And that's why it's so uh, sacred to him. And no more red, either. This game it's like uh, going through a goulash you're inside a goulash and there's a big giant spoon and, and you're going along with that spoon you're spinning around in a goulash <laughs> <That's what's going. laughs> I told them not to why would they do that make them go now may we return to our discussion Jesus, after three hours, we're still discussing this goddamn thing. <laughs> three hours, we're fucking talking here. <laughs> For three goddamn hours. Don't worry. I won't let 
them touch again. I'll keep them away from us. Hold on. Strangely enough, this man has a fear of the color red. But there's a reason why he doesn't like the color red. If you remember in the first game, uh, well, uh, I don't want to spoil it, but you know what I'm talking about, Ian. Uh, oh, hell yeah, dude. It's way better than the, than the SJW, The Last of Us. <clears throat> Playing as Ebby for freaking 12 hours. Jesus H. Christ. And you give Joel only four minutes. Four lousy minutes, dude. Lousy four fucking minutes. <sighs> what do you expect? When you have a female writer, a female writer called Heli Gross, terrible human being, and they even call her a terrible human being. Neil Druckmann calls her a terrible human being because Heli Gross, she's grossingly infected The Last of Us Part Two with the Me Too movement and SJWs, and uh, it's just. No man will be alive, and no woman will be left behind. They'll survive. Except the pregnant woman. Why? Because you're pregnant. You were pregnant with a, with a man. The man was in there. Misogynist, disgusting man was in there. You gotta go. Ah, oh, disgusting story. I can't believe I gave that game 10 out of 10. God. I gave it a 10 out of 10 because of... Uh, I'll tell you why. Because of the graphics and mechanics. Even Solid Rev agrees. Even he says, you know, the mechanics of the game, the accessibility and customization in the game, uh, the, including the, the graphics and the sound, it's very realistic. So, because of that, you know, you kind of got to give it 10 out of 10, you know. But the story, it's just... It's just... One big giant sinuses migraine. It's what that fucking story is. One big... It's like big sinuses migraine. <laughs> hey look I'm gonna oh I left my goddamn thing over here hold on I left my watermelon my watermelon it's getting dry mm. Mm. it's dry my watermelon's dry why has been sitting here for three hours for three goddamn hours thanks to you Francis York Morgan I'm um, excuse me Francis Zach Morgan Guten Morgan mm. Mm -mm. Mm. oh god all right where were we this 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 live stream is turning into nowhere it's like a Twilight Zone live stream People are going to get hypnotic with this live stream. They're going to have a migraine headaches and they're going... <laughs> Actually, we just passed uh, the doctor's sleep director's cut. This is longer... This entire scene is longer than a doctor... Doctor sleep movie <laughs> director's cut. This is some fucked up live stream, dude. 
And I believe that fear is connected to the Greenville case. <sighs> God, let's just get get over to get this over with, man. Oh God, here we go again. <laughs> sleep, 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 sleep. <laughs> Deep, deep, deep. Sleep, sleep, sleep. Deep, deep. <laughs> Need you to sleep. Deep, deep, sleep. Kind of like Nine Inch Nails. Deep, 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 deep. Sleep, sleep, sleep. Deep, deep, deep. <laughs> Sleep, sleep, sleep. <laughs> What's up, Derek? I knew. I was waiting for Derek. I said, don't worry. When Derek comes back here, he's not going to miss anything. Derek, you haven't missed much. <laughs> Believe me, you haven't missed anything. This is three. Uh, this is the three hours that Neil Druckmann should have given to Joel. Listen, I tell you what. If Neil Druckmann given Joel three hours in the beginning of the game... I think even Angry Joe would be less angrier. I think the anger would have been less... It would still be angry, but it would be less anger. It would be less of a... Maybe 10% less of an anger. You know? <sighs> but he gave Joel... Joel! The main character. Beloved character. Four minutes. Four minutes. Joe less angry. <laughs> I'll never forget when Joe threw the fucking controller. It's a like, fuck this shit. I'm getting an ice cream. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> oh god, Neil, Neil Crunchman, uh, and he's trolling people. Did you see that? Neil doesn't even give a fuck anymore. He's just enjoying this. He's trolling people, man. And then he wonder why there's a backlash. You trolling people, doing this. And then doing this. Come on, man. You're trolling people, bro. What do you think is going to happen? People get very sensitive about that shit, okay? Especially after you spit on their character. Pendejo. <laughs> Fuck. Kemp, why he call he, he called Joel Pendejo? Why? What? <laughs> Pendejo. We're like, why? <laughs> why is he Pendejo? I mean, what the fuck, man? Hey, uh, <laughs> I tell you what, I'm so glad that, that Manny got shot by Tommy with a sniper on his right eye. <laughs> I love that scene, man. I want to make a, a, a meme, you know, where, where he, when, when Manny's running and then... The bullet goes through his eye. But you know what's funny? Abby didn't give a shit about him. He just got killed. Abby didn't even shed a tear. It's like, okay, fuck. You gone. Who gives a shit? Like, nonchalantly, she's like, fuck this guy. <laughs> she just moved away. She didn't even bother. She didn't give a fuck about him. When Owen got killed, she was like, eh, fuck it. You had it coming. I don't care. But she cares about some child she barely knows about. Hey, look, man, the whole fucking story this makes no fucking sense. When you really think about it, it it's so forced. You're being forced to like Abby. And it's terrible. This really makes no sense. She left her wolves. She abandoned her Owen. She abandoned everybody. People got killed because of her. And still, she doesn't shed a tear. But you're supposed to feel sorry for her. And then Ellie cannot get rid of her. Even though Tommy lost an eye. She lost a finger. She can't play guitar. She lost Dina. She lost Joel. And she let her live. She goes to Catalina Island, part three, 
and then Ellie and Abby become best friends. Dina comes to join, and it's the Charlie's Angels. Fucking Charlie's Angels, part three. No, Neil Druckmann's Angels. Neil Druckmann's Angels, part three, bro. Neil Druckmann, age. Look, Neil Druckmann's Angels, part three. Neil Druckmann's Angels, part three. Hold on. Listen to this music, guys. It's very nice. Mmm. 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 Oh, this dry watermelon really sucks. I have become like uh, Joe Vargas. I'm like a Joe, uh, angry Joe right now eating. <laughs> I've been trolling him. Guys, did you see my schnitzelinator? My schnitzelinator Twitter? I'm his biggest troll. I've been trolling him so badly, it's not even funny. Ah. All right, let's go. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. No, 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 come back, come back, come back. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Cause last of us. Neil Druckmann will not sleep. All right, let's go. Mr. Morgan. <laughs> Deadly hypnosis part two. Wake up. Wake up, Mr. Morgan. Good Morgan. I'd like to ask you some questions about this case now. Oh, well, hold on. She liked to ask some questions about this case. But now, what are you doing for three hours? Hold on a second. So, the three hours was just a foreplay. And now you're going to ask him some real fucking questions. Are you kidding me? We spent three hours just, what, um, snowballing? Circle jerk? Now you're going to ask him real questions? Oh my we God. don't. Want to remember that town. Why not? We want to remember that town. Just like we want to remember the first last of us. Yes, the first last of us. The masterpiece. I don't know what this is. The second part is just like some weird dream. Pulls suck, man. <laughs> he sold us out, man. He lied to us. He told us that, um, he showed us the trailer in E3 where clearly you see Joel telling to Ellie, remember on the E3 show? We see Ellie, Seattle, day two. And then we see Joe grabbing her. And then when she turns around, she says to him, what the hell are you doing here? And then he goes like, and, and Joe says, you think I'll let you do this on your own? You think I'll let you do this on your own? I was like, what the fuck? And then we see Jesse. Jesse came in in a Seattle day two and says, you think I let you do this on your own, huh? That was wrong on so many damn levels, dude. Basically, what you were saying in that trailer, you were saying to us, yes, Joel's going to be throughout the game helping Ellie. You'll be playing as Joel and Ellie together. Maybe a co-op, online co-op. How nice would that be to have an online co-op? You can choose to be Joel or Ellie. How cool would that be? People would go fucking bananas over that game. But no, 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 which I'm gonna drink this SJW piss to get used to it. Here we go. Mm. Mm. 
I'll I'll feel I'll feel better. <laughs> uh, they need to uh, listen. They need to do the same thing, what they've done in Star Wars. They need to uh, delete The Last of Us Part Two like it never happened, like it was a bad dream, just like a Terminator Dark Fate. It was a bad dream. It never happened. Just ignore it, destroy it, like it never happened. Bury it somewhere, whatever, uh, and then do a uh, true sequel for The Last of Us, the first one. That's what they need to do. They need to cancel uh, The Last of Us Part 2. And uh, I don't know what else to tell you. I mean, what else can they do? But it's all deserved. Listen, Ian, it's justified. Well, I did some research. It's justified. It is justified. Come on, man. You know, this is not how you... Uh, if it wasn't for the fans of the first game, you wouldn't be making that money right now, Neil Druckmann. You wouldn't be enjoying your life the way you're enjoying it right now. So this is really like you taking a big... Sh taking a shit on your fans. You're shitting on the hand that feeds you. You're pissing... Spitting, which you did spit, and shit on the hand that feeds you, man. That's the worst thing you can do. To shit on the hand that feeds you, man. Uh, whoever told you this is a great idea, you need to fire them. Like, without a pay. Without any pay, no severance pay, no nothing. Zero. Fired. Get out of here. You're fired. Who told you this was a great fucking idea? I would have fired that person and said, you said that? Okay, you're out. Out of here. Get the fuck out of here. Pick up your shit and you're out. Who told you it's a great idea to do this shit, man? Who? Who would have possibly... Oh, that's right. Wusa, Wusa, take your time. I need to take more of my uh, SJW piss here. Hold on. I'll feel better. Neil Druckmann says, if you drink this SJW piss... And the Me Too movement, this is a like uh, Johnny Walker, except it's a Neil and Haley Gross Walker SJW Me Too movement piss drink. Here, enjoy it. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> 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 It was all a shock value, man, but it, it didn't work. It didn't work. And then you save Tommy. What the fuck for you saving Tommy? Why don't you save Joel? I would rather have Joel to be like Big Boss with one eye. Fuck, even Joel in the wheelchair, I'll, I'll fucking deal with that. But no, you kill him. Like a zombie. I'm sorry, but there's no way around this. That's the thing, man. We we hate the decisions, the writers. I remember hearing about this case on the news when I was still a student. Or oh, you were a student when this case was happening. Well, guess what? I had a PlayStation 3. I was playing that game on a PlayStation 3 called Director's Cut. A high school girl named Anna Graham was murdered and the FBI stepped in to take over the case. I also remember it becoming a sprawled investigation due to evidence found in the victim's throat. This music is killing me. I'll have, I'll, I will have nightmares tonight when I go to sleep. This music will be on. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Neil Druckmann is calling. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Neil Druckmann is trolling. Wake up, wake up, wake up. <clears throat> is that correct? Yes, 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 yes. After that case, you went on sick leave for two years. <laughs> 
you know what? At this point, I don't care about any of these fucking characters. I could care less. I hope the fucking ghost comes in and strangles every, all three of them. And when you returned, you requested to be switched over to desk work. This is a torture, man. Three and a half hours of fucking torture. God damn. What happened? Neil Druckmann happened. Neil Druckmann also co-wrote this story. But it's a fucked up story a little bit more. Neil Druckmann is trolling again on this story. That's a private matter. <laughs> Neil Druckmann, it's everywhere. No, Dr Neil Druckmann is the biggest. He's the king of trolls. He's everywhere, dude. He's everywhere. None of your business, Bill. What do you mean, none of her business? What are you talking about, dude? Of course, it's my business. Were you traumatized? Yes, after three and a half hours, everybody who's watching this live stream are fucking traumatized. They will never recover from this shit. They will never recover. There is no recovery after this shit, man. It's over. <laughs> oh, God. Hmm. 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 Okay, are we ready? Here we go. It's a common problem with prolific agents such as yourself. Uh, uh, I am prolific. I'm not politic. I am prolific. Na 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 na. Na, 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 na. But there's another possibility that may make more sense. God. Nothing will make sense in this game. <laughs> Perhaps. Thank God the music has stopped. Woo! Hold on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. Good Lord. Three and a half hours. Woo. Three and a half hours of this, Jesus Christ. You simply finished making preparations. <laughs> oh, God. Yes, Neil Druckmann made preparations for this game. <laughs> this is a prologue for the part three, Catalina's Island. He's the doctor of Catalina's Island. You gotta find out. And the governor of that island, it's Neil Druckmann. <laughs> what are you getting at? I'm getting at the fact that we've been sitting here for three and a half hours and you still have yet to tell me where this is going. <laughs> he is. He's a third. No, he's a Ian. He's a third. Remember? We have York. We have Zach. And then Cuckman. It's the third one. We got to call him Cuckman. They call him Cuckman. Thinking too much about something will always turn it into a problem. Yes. But Neil Cuckman did this on purpose. He traumatized me for 12 days. 12 freaking days of trauma that I can't get those 12 days back of trauma. And seeing Manny spit on my favorite character. <laughs> After they just played the golf tournament, Hot Shot Golf. Sponsored to you by, sponsored to you by Joel Miller. PGA Tour. Gah, it's such a disgusting fucking scene. It's so disgusting. Mm. God damn it. Anyway. 
The Greenvale case. Yes, finally. The Greenvale case. After three hours and 30 minutes. Don't you think it resembles the Luke Carre case? <laughs> I agree, Mamba Man. I agree, James. Uh, it's getting worse. It's getting worse. It's not just the, the video games. It's the movies. It's the sports. It's the uh, TV shows. It's music. It's everything. It's the books. Everything. Dude, it's just... That ain't right, man. That ain't right. There you go. Us, the gaming army, must fight against SJWs for the fallen army of The Last of Us fans after the terrible disaster that happened on June 19th, 2020, 2020. With Neil Druckmann at the helm attacking Joel, we just fight to honor the Joel Miller. We're going to build the Joel Miller army and we're going to fight for the justice. For Joel Miller. Yes. That's it. The Last of Us 2 Resistance. Read the report. Oh, fuck. Here we go again. Neil Cockman is back. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Neil Cockman is here to troll you, Neil. We have nothing else to say. <sighs> Joe Miller lives. Joe Miller lives. He will be resurrected. He will show up like shining in the doctor's sleep. Doctor sleep. Part 3. In Catalina Island, he shows up as a ghost. And Ellie sees him because she's uh, shining. She's, she can shine. She can see him. So Joel is helping her as the ghost. And he says, here's what we're going to do. We're going to find a Neil Cockman. We're going to make him pay. Pay, 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 pay. <laughs> I just need one more push. He is, man. <sighs> one more thing that can summon up the past. And that is? Hip-hop, what's up, brother? You ready? Listen, here we go. Hip hop 90s, we've been listening to this. We've been sitting here talking for three and a half hours. Me, Simon, and Zach Morgan, and Aaliyah Davis. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We're going to cancel The Last of Us Part 2, and we're going to make The Real Last of Us, where, jo where Joel and Ellie. They don't even go to Jackson, Wyoming. They continue on their own. They move to Canada. And they built a cabin and they try to survive there. Because they don't trust anybody. They don't trust people. Remember, Joel Miller doesn't trust anyone. Especially in this apocalypse. He trusts no one. And he'll do anything that it takes to, to save Ellie. He's not a, he's not a Momo. He's not a, a twat. He's not stupid. He's not going to go walk around, especially when he knows that the, uh, that the fireflies are after him. Everybody's after him because they know that he has the, the cure. And the cure is Ellie. So he's going to run away from Tommy, from everybody. He doesn't trust Tommy. He doesn't trust anyone. He's not going to settle fucking down. There's no settling down. In the fucking apocalypse. What kind of bullshit story is this? We're going to do the right story. The correct sequel. We're going to make the real sequel of The Last of Us. Not this bullshit. 
Ebby. <sighs> no, almost four hours. Hip hop, I'm not kidding. Almost four hours. We've been sitting here. Uh, Aaliyah Davis, which is an FBI agent. Simon, uh, uh, some kind of a dork FBI agent. And then Francis Morgan, uh, Zach Morgan, not York Morgan, Zach Morgan, sitting here. We've been talking and chatting and talking and for almost four hours. Four hours, I'm not kidding. Four hours. Mr. Morgan, please look at this. What did we just say? We don't want to remember Greenvale. Why not? Why you don't want to remember Greenvale? Why? What is it about the Greenvale that bothers you so much? Is it that the Neil Druckmann manipulated you in Green Whale? Mm? Is that what happened? Yes, Neil Cockman manipulated you and he laughed while drinking alcohol with his hairy beard with all that alcohol spitting out of his mouth into his beard laughing hysterically while manipulating you with bunch of chicks kissing his feet and he manipulated you in Greenwill. And now you have this nightmares from Greenwill of Neil Cockman. <laughs> I'm telling you, bro. It's it's like a weird dream. Dude, it's no, it's it look. Hip hop, we were just talking about this. It doesn't feel real, man. This this whole year. I don't even think I'm real right now. I, do, I don't think this is real. I mean, dude, nothing feels real. This is the most weirdest. Like we entered some fucked up dimension, dude. Seriously, it's like our planet, planet Earth, went into some fucking weird ass dimension. We entered some kind of dimension and we didn't realize that this year. It's fucking weird, man. 2020, a fucking hell. Unbelievable. But anyway, let's 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 go through this hell. Let's go through this hell. We're in it now. We gotta go through it. Right, Francis Zach Morgan. You ain't kidding, Mamba. You ain't kidding, brother. For real. We did. This isn't a photo from Greenvale. No. It is Neil Cockman and Abby and Ellie down below me. Well, I'm drinking my Johnny Walker. But it wasn't me. It was Neil Cockman laughing hysterically as he was drinking the Johnny Walker. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to look at it closely. It is Neil Cockman. I know. <laughs> I don't want to look at it. Former Special Agent Francis Zach Morgan. That wasn't me. That was Neil Cockman. Not me. <laughs> Eternal darkness, yes. The last of Corona. The extra, last, the extra Corona part three. Catalina Islands, yes. I don't always go to Catalina Islands, but when I do, I go all the way with Abby and Neil Kackman. With the extra Catalina Corona. 
extract it. Oh, man. Oh, there's that tree. I remember it. The Neil Cuckman tree. This How could I forget? This photograph predates Greenvale. It is. It is hip-hop. I mean, they gave Joel only four minutes. Four minutes? They gave Abby 12 hours. They haven't even given Ellie that much. They gave Ellie maybe six and a half hours. Abby gotten 12 hours and... Uh, Joel only got four minutes. That's all you worth it, Joel. Four minutes. Even Troy Baker said... Even he said it. I don't know if he realized what he had said when he was asked this question. But he said on, on, uh, on one of the podcasts, he said, I think Alana Pierce asked Troy Baker, how long did it take you to shoot the scenes as Joel Miller for The Last of Us Part Two? You know what he said? Six days. If even six days. He's not even sure if it was even six days. Maybe less than that. It's getting, it's getting crazy, man. It's from the Lucare case you worked on in 2005. Now, why is Troy Baker defending uh, Neil Druckmann? And because he doesn't want to lose the paycheck. He doesn't want to lose the paycheck. Deep down, guys, do you really think deep down that Troy Baker agreed with this decision? Do you think that he enjoyed this decision? No. But you gotta do what you gotta do to survive. Money's money, man. You gotta put food on the fucking table. I understand that. I, I, I get that. I'm not blaming Troy Baker. He's just an actor. He's a talented actor, talented musician, well-educated person. However, Decisions that were made by Heli Gross and Neil Druckmann, Neil Cuckman, terrible decisions. And why was she brought on board as a writer? Oh, gee whiz. Maybe it has something to do with Neil Cuckman giving the award to Anita Sarkeesian. Or Anna Sarkeesian. Was it Anita or Anna? Anna Sarkeesian, whatever. Even it's a fucked up name to begin with. Anna Sarkeesian. Blah, 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 blah. Is it even your real name? I doubt it. Anna Sarkeesian. I'm Anna Sarkeesian. Yeah. Yeah. You know. So, it all makes sense. If you do your research, there's a video of Neil Kuckman giving her a hug and giving her the award of the best feminist. The leader of the feminism. Here's your award, and I'm going to make sure that my game, The Last of Us Part 2, has your writer, your friend, Haley Gross, inside my game, writing the story. And that's all there is to it. Troy Baker, can't blame the guy. You know, he has a family, he has a kid. He's got to put the food on the table. But deep down, of course, he fucking hates this. And it, and it drives him even more crazy that he has to pretend. He can do it because he's an actor. He knows how to pretend. He's an actor. He does that for a living. But he has to pretend. To pretend that, oh, he likes this and he has to defend this. But deep down, he fucking hates it. He hates it. He hates the fact that, that they killed this fucking character. I know, Troy. I know. So, it's not his fault. Can't blame Troy Baker for this. You know, he's got to do what he's got to do to survive. Because, you know, Naughty Dog writes a big fat paycheck. And he doesn't want to lose that. You know? You know. 
Yeah. Oh, they are? That's going to be awesome, dude. In the Dirt 5 game, that's cool. I can't wait for them to come back again. I used to watch... Um, what is it? What's the name of that thing? Um, retro Gaming. They don't do it anymore because of coronavirus. But uh, it would be cool to see them do it like over Skype or something or over Google Hangout. Because I miss uh, Retro Gaming, uh, Troy Baker and uh, Nolan North, man. That was so fucking awesome. Not really Mamba. I, I really like, uh, I haven't been paying attention to uh, Major League Baseball for quite a long time now, you know. It's just I don't have time, you know. I kind of like, I used to follow it back in the days, but not anymore, you know. Yeah, retro replay. Yeah. Red. And I know, I know, back in the days, everybody's going to laugh. I know it's, a, it's not a great team, but uh, fuck it. I was a Florida Marlins fan. So there, there you have it. <laughs> But I, I stopped watching it back in uh, 2016. I stopped, you know. It's just uh, my interest in sports and all that just kind of toned down a little bit. Especially now with the NFL and all this kneeling bullshit and this and that and all this other crap. Uh, you know, it's just, uh, dude, don't bring politics into sports. I'm not fucking interested in that shit. Don't bring your politics into sports. Just let me enjoy the fucking game. Let me enjoy my team. You know, don't bring and inject your, you know, movements and all this other shit. I don't care. There's a time and place for that. Keep it there. But don't inject it into sports. Don't inject it in, into everything. That's what bothers me these days. Everything has to be injected. Everything has to be forced into your throat. Everyone has to rape you and force you. For something that you don't fucking care. Or, or whatever. I'm just simply saying. I watch sports because. I want to stay away from politics and everyday bullshit. I listen to music because I want to stay away from politics and all this bullshit. I watch movies and entertainment. Because I want to stay away from politics and all this other bullshit. I play video games because I want to stay away from politics and all this other bullshit. But no. You won't leave me alone. You want to inject that shit everywhere I fucking go. Man. No, you can't even watch sports anymore. It's Colin Kaepernick this, Colin Kaepernick that. Fuck you, Colin Kaepernick. I don't give a fuck, dude. Fuck your ideals, okay? Shove it up your ass. Alright? Nobody cares. You want to help communities? Help communities go to the very bad areas and give up, give up all your money. Start some project. Why don't you start a passion project? Create a university, Colin Kaepernick. Create a university where you don't have to get a loan to go to college. You pay for that loan. You give people the program. Let them choose their passion, what they want to be. Do they want to be an artist? Do they want to be a painter? Do they want to be a video production? Whatever their passion is, let them choose their passion. Use that money for something fucking good. But you're not going to do that, are you, Colin Kaepernick? No. You want to shove it up my ass with your stupid fucking ideals. I'm tired of that shit, man. Kiss my ass. Kiss my ass while I fart. It's getting so ridiculous, man. If I had billions of dollars, I would create a university. If I was Jeff Bezos, I would create a university. I would pay for, for the resources. Why? Because I have the money to do it. All you have to do is graduate. You don't owe any money. There is no loan. You don't own banks, anything. There is no loans. There is no banks. All you have to do is graduate. Keep, keep repeating it till you graduate. Once you graduate, then you're on your own. You got your diploma and you can start your journey. 
Whatever it is that you have a passion for. You'd be like a little university called the Passion Project. That's what I would do. Of course, I would have to go through the legal system, through congressional hearing. He would have to be approved throughout the states, through educational system. Sure. But you can do something like that. Why don't you do something like that? If you truly care about the real change. If you truly care about the kids living in poverty. So they don't go into the gangs. So they don't go into the fucking drug dealing. So they don't lose their life at a young age. Gang banging, shooting each other. Why don't you start doing that? Why don't you start there? You're not gonna do that. No, 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 no. Yeah, tired of this bullshit, man. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, but they're not gonna say, but because it doesn't fit their narrative. Where do you think this money goes? We all know where the money goes. It goes to, goes to the politicians, goes to these, these, these parties. They're just using celebrities and they're exploiting the situation as an excuse so they can get their money raise their money so they can go ahead and elect their party and let their party be in charge or whatever yet nothing's gonna change you're still gonna have same old same old same old same old repeating the same fucking loop over and over and over and over again because you're a good sheep and you're being brainwashed and you're gonna do exactly what you're being told. Anyway, Three. let's go. Red tree. Yes, I remember red tree. Honestly, I mean, just it's nothing's gonna change, man. This is just a broken needle on a vinyl looping. Do 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 do. That's it. That's all it is, man. It's just fucking on a loop. 24-7, 365 days a year, non-stop. Looping, 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 looping. Nothing's gonna change. Red tree. Yes, a red tree. A red tree. Yes, finally we're getting somewhere. I have Super Smash Brothers. I have Mario Kart 8. Uh, what else I have? Zelda, Legend of Zelda. I have Legend of Zelda. And uh, there's something else that I have. Oh yeah, Super Smash Brothers. I have Super Smash Brothers. But I don't have Animal Crossing. I need Animal Crossing. <laughs> Look, man, this whole thing, I want to say this. It's sad. It's we're living in sad times. This really hurts me, man. It, it tears my soul apart, man, to see what has happened. It really, I, I'm not showing it here, but when I'm off the, off the screen, when I'm not live, I shed a couple of tears because it's just sad, man. It is fucking sad. It's sad what has happened to us, man. It's sad. It's super sad. It's the saddest time I've ever, I've ever experienced. It's sad. Disappointing and sad. Really, really, really sad. I hope aliens come down. We need you aliens now. Now's the time. By the end of this year or next year, you guys need to show up in Big Armada. Come on in. I don't know what else needs to happen. They need to come down. Dude, now's the time for them to come down. I mean, like Independence Day. You know, they're all like... <sighs> big giant ships. <clears throat> Greenvale wasn't the first place you saw one of these. Uh-oh, we're getting somewhere now. So she's saying that this red tree... Are you talking about this red tree? This red tree? Mm. This flying saucer, this watermelon? It looks like a UFO, look. It is like a UFO. 
There it is. <laughs> the Greenvale case and the Lise Clarkson murder case. She's hot, by the way. Hip hop, Aaliyah Davis. Dude, um, we're trying to find out what's the. Uh, me and Philippe. Felipe, we were trying to. Uh, I think his name was Felipe. Um, we were trying to find out the name of the actress uh, that's playing Aaliyah Davis, but we don't know who it is. Because she's not on IMDb, she's not on Wiki, so we cannot find who she is. We gotta keep it real, hip hop. This is the only. Listen, the only way you can breathe fresh air. The only way we all can breathe the fresh air is the truth. Real talk means truth. Truth is the only thing that's going to let us breathe a fresh, clean air. It's the only way. That's the only way. There's no other way. Mm -mm. The only way it's truth. Real talk. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's funny. I was just uh, I was talking to to this girl um, that was cutting my hair. Uh, this uh, the girl Barbara, um, and she was telling me, man. It's just uh, I said to her, look, you know, I'm optimistic. I'm always optimistic, even in the worst of the darkest days. Um, I'm always optimistic. I'm, I know that there has to be. There has to be the end of uh, the the light at the end of the tunnel. There has to be a light at the end of the tunnel. Okay, so I'm always positive. I'm always keeping because positivity is what keeps you going. It's that fuel that keeps you going. Um, that hope that there is the uh, the light at the end of the tunnel. You know, because if you lose that, if you lose that hope. Then, uh, like I was telling this girl, if you lose that hope, then we become like robots, robotic. And you don't want to end up being robotic. You know what robotic means? Every day is the same. Nine o'clock, go to work, come back. Yes, support this, pay this. Understood. It's 10 o'clock, go to sleep again. Wake up at 4, get up at 6, the boss is calling you, you need to work overtime, yes, do not question it, yes, you know, everything becomes robotic, and you don't want to end up like that, you know, and some people have ended up like that, some people are like that nowadays, they're robotic, everything they do is robotic, with set of coordinations, set of programs every day to repeat the same thing over and over and over and over again. But I always try to be positive. I always try to keep this hope that there is the, uh, the light at the end of the tunnel. This can be it forever. This can be permanent. Uh, that there will be uh, the light at the end of the tunnel. You know. But first, we must go through hell before we see that uh, light at the end of the tunnel. They're connected. By these red trees. Yes. Aren't they? Red trees. Red trees. Both Answer me. What are these trees? Red trees. I want the truth. Tell them the truth. Tell me everything you know. Do it now. Tell her. <laughs> the red trees. You really did your homework. Of course. Well, you're good. Damn good. 
Now we're getting somewhere. Mm. Are you ready to talk now? What have we been doing for four hours? What do you mean he's ready to talk now? What in the bloody hell we've been doing for four hours? Wait a minute, NASCAR heat is already out? No way. My priority right now, it's a Ghost of Tsushima. That's for next Friday, dude. Ghost of Tsushima is my priority. Oof. How many days we have left? Six more days till Ghost of Tsushima. Ghost of Tsushima. I want to know what went down in Lucare in 2005. Hurricane Katrina went by for sure. Fine. We'll tell you. After four hours, now finally. I don't know. Maybe. Possibly. Because my first priority right now, it's... Uh, uh, Ghost of Tsushima, man. That's like uh, number one priority. We'll tell you what happened in that town. Tell me. Yes. Tell her, Zach Morgan, what happened. Yeah, man, it's all, it's all done for the obvious reasons, man. They're pushing their agenda through entertainment and art. I mean, what better way to push your agendas than through through entertainment and art, right? Young youth, uh, girls growing up, uh, teenagers, you know, growing up. What's the best way to brainwash them is when they're young, when they're like at their peak moments, when they're teenagers. That's the best way to brainwash them. So how do you do that? You brainwash them through the video games, movies, entertainment, sports, etc., etc., etc. And it's very easy to brainwash people at that young age. It doesn't take much. That's when you're the most vulnerable at that age to be brainwashed. So, you know. It was that red tree. Oh, you bought it twice? Oh my goodness. Can you, can you refund it? That red tree ruined my life. It was a beautiful tree. A beautiful tree, red tree. It was a sultry summer day. Yes, I was approached by Neil Druckmann. He put a hand on my shoulder and he says, Come with me. I'll show you the heaven. Come with me. Cool. sun comes down hard on you in the south like a torrential downpour of demonic whispers I never played the surge too I might check it out Sekiro I just couldn't get into Sekiro man I tried but I couldn't get into it uh, surge too I might look into it <clears throat> it all started back in that sweltering summer still had our best friend with us back then the other me <laughs> my better half york morgan wow after four hours <gasps> four fucking hours dude When somebody needs you, you can't turn away. You're their only lifeline. 
Just a hero, a bullet for hire, walking alone. I don't know, Dama. You never know. Always Could be. A cry in the darkness, an echo of pain that's been long forgotten, but it haunts me. My destiny. Ghost of Tsushima is gonna be tough to beat, man. That game, it's uh, fucking unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> that was Neil Druckmann, dude. That was Neil Druckmann. Oh my goodness. This is like a true detectives, though. It, it starts like true detectives. There's the red leaf. Is this the loading time? There's... No, he was right. Zach. Yes, York. York. York Morgan. Can you hear me? York. York. York Morgan. Good Morgan, York. York Morgan. Zach. Yes, yes, yes. It's me, Neil K -K 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 Cockman. What do you want? It's me, Neil K -K 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 Cockman. I know when they're going to do that, man. When they're going to add you play plus. Well, we'll find out on Sunday. Yes, the game finally... After four hours, dude. Prologue, it's four hours. <gasps> Bro, this is the longest prologue. Four hours, dude. This beats... This beats the Neil Cuckman game. This beats The Last of Us. Ooh, July 14th, Tuesday. I'm going to live stream that shit. I can do it this time. Mamba man, I can do it this time. There will be some free games on July 14th. Get ready. Dr. Phil uh, Harrison's got something for us. It's me, Neil K -K 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 Cockman. How k -K -K can I help you? Can you hear me, Zach? Yes, I c can hear you. It's me, T -t -t Neil. What can I t -t do for you? C I am a answering. C c can you hear me? It's, it's me. Cockman. Cockman. <laughs> Ugh. What happened? The Cockman won't answer. Oh my God. What happened to this game? It's me. Cockman. There you are, Zach. It no 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 no. It's it's, it's Neil. Neil C -C Cockman. 
What religion makes sense to me? Uh, 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 none, none make any sense to me. None. But I understand why they're there. But they don't make any sense. But I understand why they're there. They're there to keep people civilized so they don't exterminate each other, I guess. But if you look at religion, look how many people died because of religion in the name of God. So where do you find the thin line in all of that? I don't know. <clears throat> uh, there was a philosopher, PhD philosopher. Hold on a second. We'll continue. From um, which fucking... Um, I forgot... I forgot from which university. Anywho, um, he said, I forgot his name too, but uh, <clears throat> he said, in all the knowledge that he has, in all of his years, and everything that he's read, everything that he's studied, and everything he's been through, 50 plus something years, in this world, Quote, he says, in this world, nothing will ever make any sense to you. And I'm like, okay. And now when I think about that, it's like, maybe he's got a point. When you go through everything, when you rewind the film, when you look at everything that has happened, uh, you say to yourself, well, how does this make any sense? It doesn't. But it, it never made any sense. Maybe this is all just one big accident, and here we are. Maybe, or maybe not. But the thing is, it seems that we were not meant to know. Whatever this is, we're not meant to know. We don't need to know. We are forbidden to know. For whatever reasons that this universe has created itself for. And um, but yet here we are. Make the best of it. So, but if you finding to find some, if you're looking for some closure to help you sleep at night that will make sense to you, you're not going to find that. You're not going to find that because nothing will make any sense to you. I mean, you can lie to yourself. You can say, okay, this makes sense, but does it really? Uh, so maybe he had a good point. Okay, Francis York Morgan, I'm here. <laughs> Sleeping again? I am Neil C C Cockman. I t never s sleep. Never s sleep. S never s sleep. Well, rise and shine. It's time for us to head back out into the chaos. Oh! Chaos? Well, why didn't you say so? I love chaos. Chaos with Abby, 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 Abby. After four hours and 15 minutes? Yes, after Isn't four hours. Isn't right? Zach? 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 Yeah. Who, who passed away? Oh, you're talking about a Heath Ledger? 
Oh yeah, man, Heath Ledger, man. When he when he passed away, dude, I was so like fucking devastated. I was like, wow, we lost a good one. Yeah, we lost a good one, man. We lost Heath Ledger. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't just like him because of the uh, Joker. I always tell people I used to watch the guy uh, even before the Joker. I saw him in the movie The Patriot with Mel Gibson. And I, ever since that movie, I said, man, this guy's pretty good, man. And then after The Patriot, there was a bunch of other movies and then Brokeback Mountain and then, you know, Knight's Tale and et cetera, et cetera. So I knew about Heath Ledger even before, you know, uh, Casanova. I watched that too. Uh, so it's like, it's not because of the Joker, you know, it's like, Joker was his groundbreaking performance, period. But I liked the guy even before, even before uh, the Joker, you know. Now, the Joker is his most iconic performance and his last performance, you know. Yeah. Hmm. And here we go. Hmm? No? What happened? Ah, there you are. Finally, the game starts after four hours and 16 minutes. Four hours and 16 minutes. Oh, we're going back in time. 2005. All right. What do we have here? Hmm? I cannot pronounce that. I'm not French. Hmm. All right. There's a bird. And the bird is sitting on the balcony. Oh, Zach, it looks like she wants us to join her for breakfast. Perhaps this town's finally starting to warm up to us. Why are people complaining about graphics? Not that bad. Okay, so this is... Alright. I wanna... Look at that, Zach. She's welcoming us with open arms. She's even willing to share that tasty morsel with us. What an honor. Hurry up and chow down, mister. Unless you like your breakfast stale. What an amazing place. I've been on top of the moon <laughs> since the moment I got here. And the name of this wonderful town, Le Carre, sounds like French to me. But what does it mean? This is in New Orleans. I'm the chef. Somewhere in New yeah. Orleans, man. If you want to know about the town, you'd better ask the concierge. Only amateur chefs flap their gums about stuff that ain't food related. Hold on. This is Louisiana, man. 2005 Louisiana. You know that, Zach? He's a true professional. You say something, mister? Uh, no, not to you. I was just talking to Zach. Zach? Uh, please don't ask me about Zach. It's a private matter. If you say so, still. <laughs> Never thought the FBI would ever come out to a little old town like ours. I do work for the FBI, but I didn't come here for an investigation. I just happened to stop by on my way to New Orleans. <sighs> Never thought there'd be a murder out here either. And it was a 16-year-old kid. Now I tell you, this country seen better days. What you reckon, mister? Zach, he's definitely a professional. But it seems like he's also a bit lonesome. That's good. Ambivalence exists everywhere. Folks say the killer used an axe. Hell of an old-fashioned choice if you ask me. Actually, Chef David, if you don't mind, I'd like to ask you a few questions about the incident. But shoot, I ain't the one you ought to be asking Mr. FBI. I only heard what I heard, but seeing as you're fixing to grill me, I can tell you what I know. Please do. I appreciate it. 
it's interesting that this is set in 2005 because in 2005 if I'm not mistaken terrible category 5 hit Louisiana hit New Orleans category 5 hurricane called Katrina <clears throat> so that's gonna be interesting to see how this game progressed through that all right let's ask some questions I think it was still open in 2005 <clears throat> I'm not sure, I have to look it up, but I think it was, James. What do you know about the victim? Hmm? Let's ask him about the victim. You said the victim was a 16-year-old. Did you know her? Well, sure. I reckon the whole town did. Hmm? The whole town did? What? Meaning? The whole town did? What is this? What the hell's going on in this town? She's Lise Clarkson. The little grandbaby of the Clarkson family. And what do Clarksons do? The Clarkson family? That's right. Hmm. Something fishy about this. You ain't seen they sign on your way in here? No. The one above that huge coal storage complex. Should have had a dragonfly on it. Dragonfly? Anyway, that's the Clarkson family seat. Dragonfly, you better write that down. Agent York, Francis Morgan. Oh, yeah, man. Truckload of uh, alligators, crocodiles, pythons. Yeah, Louisiana, man. It's just uh, that part right there. That's near uh, Lafayette, right? Not far from Lafayette. They own most of the land around here, from the sugar plantations right down to the food processing plant. <laughs> Make that Chico disappear. Well, fine. But I got an offer for you, Tony Montana. Hmm? How about an ice cream? Would you like to see an ice cream? Or maybe a watermelon? Hmm? Would you like to see this watermelon disappear? Here, look. Mmm. And I thought my jokes were bad. Hmm? So they own most of the land around here from the sugar plantation right down to the food processing plant. All right. Yeah, I reckon they got a stake in just about everything. Ooh. I had that, man. Can laugh soup, man. It's fucking good. Their chalaka bobs with rice are good too, as well. New Orleans got some good fucking bars and good food, man. They even own the water tower on the edge of town, you know. They're the ones who built up this town, and they still support it. Mardi Gras. If you ever go to Mardi Gras in New Orleans, oh. Bro, you guaranteed to have fun. Dude, it's not up to you. When you're in the Mardi Gras, you're going to have fun, whether you like it or not. Let's put it that way. You're going to have fun, whether you like it or not. And I kind of like that shit, bro. I liked it about Mardi Gras. <clears throat> All right, where's the Clarkson house? Where is the Clarkson's house? I will ask this one more time. And then I will make this drink disappear. In my mouth. Huh? <laughs> we gotta all hang out together, man. Seriously. We gotta hang out all together, man. When this whole fucking thing, Corona shit goes away. We gotta hang what out. What do you know about the Clarkson's house? 
Now, I ain't got nothing bad to say. Oh, come on. Nick Fury. Or should I call Captain Marvel and ask her about the cat? Then the cat scratch your eye, hmm? But I'm gonna <clears throat> talk straight to you. You best steer clear of that place. Well, this is why we're not gonna steer clear from that place. I walk straight into the danger. I am the chaos of a danger. I love danger. I go right into it. That family ain't just some gang. They're a whole different kind of beast. Oh, this is gonna be interesting, bro. It's just gonna be interesting. They folks with real power. Remnants of the good old boys who shaped America in the early days. Oh, this is gonna be so good. Especially the head of the family, P. Clarkson. Clarkson. He's the kind of monster who <clears throat> goes around eating other monsters. Oh yeah, man, that'll be fucking awesome, dude. For those of you who've been to Mardi Gras, man, you know it's like you have to have fun. Like you have no choice. Like you're gonna have fun, dude. Trust me. And it's so much, so much good time. Just uh, <clears throat> my problem is like when I go to Mardi Gras, you always forget where my keys are, where my wallet is, where this is, where that is, where's my phone, dude. You're gonna lose shit. You are going to lose shit. For sure in Mardi Gras. Or somebody's going to reach in your fucking pocket. You won't even realize. Uh, you're going to lose your shit, man. Uh, so it's fun being there. But at the same time, you're going to lose your shit. 100%. You're going to be so fucked up. You're going to lose. It's so loud. It's so noisy. And too much crowd. Like sometimes you're just like, uh, what? Uh, New Orleans, man. It's just, uh, it's like an adult playground. It's like an adult playground, man. Seriously. It's like a little mini adult playground. <clears throat> and I'm sure he's on edge now with his granddaughter getting murdered and all. So don't go barging in with that shiny FBI badge of yours and think you'll be safe for nothing. Don't worry. He is Captain York Morgan. He's a York Morgan. He's a York Morgan. Hey, isn't there a, a UFC tomorrow? Right, there's a UFC tomorrow. I think so. So there, there's a fight tomorrow. I forgot who's fighting. Things are different down here. So if you plan on sticking around, you best remember that. Yeah, let us first survive this year, Jimmy. Let us survive this year first. <laughs> God. Let's see, August, September, October, November, December. We still got five months to go. Blah, good lord. Five more months of this. Please. I see. Well, keep that in mind. All right, what's the local law enforcement doing? Is the local law enforcement investigating the case? <laughs> yeah, right, 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 right. Wrong question. I shouldn't, I shouldn't have asked that question. Shoot, mister, what you think? I think that, well, it doesn't matter what I think. All you need, it's a matches and gasoline and wash the Watch it burn. Yeah. Now, I told you this ain't no city. We in the bonafide boondocks here. Oh, boondocks. Even better, dude. That's what I call a good time. Down yonder. We know the good time down yonder. Around them gator. I called me a 12 foot gator. I brought it home and made him a pet. The damn gator laid the eggs down there, and the little gators came out of it. Now there's a bunch of gators running around in the backyard. 
there's Florida right here, dude. There's Florida, got Georgia, Louisiana over here, Louisiana over there. There you go. Uh, welcome to the Southern Charm. We're still going through this year, guys. We haven't even finished this. That's 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 the thing, man. This thing is dragging, man. It hasn't even. We haven't even finished with it. The hurricane season just started, and I don't even want to fucking think about that shit, bro. With all these ridiculous temperatures, the last thing we need right now is the fucking Category Five. It's the last thing we need. That's the last thing everybody needs. It's some Cat Five coming in. Ah. They got the know-how to break up fights and keep folks from killing each other when they piss jaw. They sit down and talk it out with you heart to heart. And when that don't work, they just beat your ass. That's the deep south for you. Well, I reckon I better get down there. This murder ain't like that, though. A little kid got killed. Well, goddamn, that messed up, man. A weird way, like something on a TV show. Oh, hell yeah, they're giving a second stimulus check. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's it. We're getting a PlayStation 5. We're getting a PlayStation 5. Everybody's paying. The government's paying for PlayStation 5. Fucking A. That's, a, that's the best news I've ever heard. Finally, some good damn news. The Sheriff's Department ain't never seen nothing like this. Well, I ain't never seen anything like this either. But it doesn't matter. What do you know about New Orleans? Beside the Mardi Gras, what do you know about it? I reckon you a lot about New Orleans. Live and let die, Angel Heart. Live and let die, that was the movie, that the James Bond, and the original movie. That the Angel Heart was rocking Mickey Rourke, and with, I don't know. <laughs> It was a Mickey Rourke. Live and Let Die was a James Bond movie. Roger Moore. And uh, Angel Heart was Mickey Rourke. And Robert De Niro. Robert De Niro. Robert De Niro. Yeah, Roger Moore, man. Another legend. Uh, one of my favorite James Bond movies. Besides Octopus and uh, Octopussy and... Um, Moonraker and Golden uh, Golden Gun. Oh, Man with the Golden Gun. I'm sorry. Christopher Lee. I got to tell you. The um, a, view, a View to a Kill was pretty fucking good, man. A View to a Kill was pretty darn good. Opposite Christopher Walking. Christopher Walking. I told you. I'm done killing. I told you. I'm done killing. And the Pelican Brief. And the Pelican Brief. Yes, how could I forget that movie? Who was in it? Who was in the Pelican Brief? Ah. Pelican Brief. Denzel? No, Denzel wasn't in it. Pelican Brief? It was uh, Sean Connery? No, he was not in it. I know who was in the Pelican Brief. Who the fuck was in a Pelican Brief? That's it. I got to look it up now. Somebody IMDB right now. Who was in a Pelican Brief? It was it was a Denzel. It was not Denzel. Maybe it was Denzel. Wait a minute. Was Denzel Washington in the Pelican Brief? No, 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 no. Not Tom Cruise. Uh, it was, uh, Morgan Freeman. Who, fuck it. Let's go. It's just IMDB this shit. Pelican Brief. Hold on. Hold on. Google that shit. 
Who the fuck was in the Pelican Brief? Hold on. Nineteen ninety three film. Who was in it? It was Denzel. Fuck, I'm so good. Fuck, I'm so good. Pelican Brief was uh Julia Roberts and Denzel Washington. God damn it, I know my movies. I've seen this is this proves. This proves I'm the biggest Denzel Washington fan. I know every Denzel Washington movie, even Philadelphia. Fuck, I'm good, man. I told you. Yes, Denzel. You see? There. I know, man. I know I know my movies. And I know I've seen every Denzel movie. Every. Even out of place or out of time. The movie was filmed down here. Uh, a friend of mine was um, extra as a... As a fireman, as a, as a as a fire chief, he was talking to um, Denzel something about something that happened. It was like a brief scene. It was a big guy, big heavy guy, heavy set guy. It was a fire chief, uh, and they were just exchanging a couple of words, brief scene. Uh, he was down here, out of uh, out of time. It was filmed down here. Uh, Denzel was down here, so um, I know my fucking movies, man. And I know I've seen every movie that Denzel made. Even The Siege. The Siege with uh, Bruce Willis and Denzel. I've seen that as well. I've seen all of his movies, bro. Of course, Training Day. Fucking A. Yeah. Training Day, man. Ethan Hawke, you know, directed by Antoine Fuca. Antoine Fuca, I love that director. He also directed um, another great movie with Bruce Willis. Something Tears Tears of the Sun, great fucking movie. Monica Bellucci was in it, and he also directed Equalizer. I really like Antoine Fuca, man. Uh, he's a good fucking director. I really do, man. I, I like him. I like him a lot, man. I want to see more movies from Antoine Fuca. He's he's a great. Uh, now Fuca, it's F U Q U A, okay? Fuca, Antoine Fuca. So. Uh, I've seen all of the Denzel movies. I've seen all of it. Cry Freedom, uh, Antoine Fisher, uh, The Miracle, not The Miracle, the, uh, what was the one uh, with the football? Uh, fuck, man. We were, we were kings or we were warriors. What was that? Fuck. It was a, it was a head coach. Was uh was it college football or fuck what the fuck was it? I know he was a head coach. A fucking great movie, man. Uh, I can't remember the name of it. It was the Disney movie that he was in, and he played a head coach. Great fucking movie, man. Okay, I can remember. Oh, American Gangster. Oh my fucking god. How come he? How how the fuck did he not get an Oscar for that? How in the fuck? How? Oh yeah, I forgot SJWs. How in the fuck? How in the fuck? How is it even possible that he wasn't even nominated? Anyone in that movie wasn't even nominated. How fucking great that movie was, man. From beginning to the end. Everything was well done, man. Did you look at the cast? Armand Asante. Uh, you had Josh Brolin. Even Josh Brolin was in it. Great fucking cast. Written really well. Directed by uh, Ridley Scott. Uh, fucking great movie, man. Based on a true story. How is it possible? How the fuck is it possible that, that he wasn't even nominated? That no one was nominated in that movie? Seriously, man, that movie, like, deserves an Oscar. I saw it the other night on Stars. Was it Stars? I think it was Stars. I saw it the other night on Stars. What a fucking great movie. I think it's one of the best movies that Ridley Scott 
honestly has directed. Man, it was done so fucking well. And I saw the director's cut, the extended version. Was done, was written well, was acted well. Everything in that movie was done perfectly. From beginning, I swear to God, man. Was it 2006 or 2007? It was 2007. That movie was done so well. Like, so fucking well. Yeah, Remembering the Titans. Yes. Yeah, the football movie I'm thinking of. Remembering the Titans. Great fucking movie, man. I suggest it's you go watch it. It's on Disney+. Plus. If you haven't seen it, watch it on Disney+. Plus. Pelican Brief, you can watch that on HBO Max. I think it's available there. Um, all of his movies are great, dude. Uh, I mean, all of them. Seriously. Even that movie with Mark Wahlberg, it was a lot of fun. Uh, it was great to, to, to watch that chemistry between Denzel and Mark Wahlberg. And I like how Denzel just schools Mark Wahlberg, makes him look like a little, little peanut. Uh, that was fucking great. I mean, he's good in every fucking movie. He's the A-list actor, movie star, you know. And he's good in anything. Everything and anything he's good at, man. Oh, Ricochet. Ricochet. The fucking Ricochet. Fucking great movie. Who, man, who remembers the Ricochet? Fucking great movie, man. That he had a mustache. Remember? Back in the days in the... Uh, was it 19, early 1990s or 1980s? He had a mustache. Remember? He had a mustache. Denzel with mustache, man. Holy fuck, man. Back then. Money Train. Oh, Wesley Snipes. That was great, too. Fuck millennials. They can kiss my ass. They can, millennials can kiss my ass. SJWs and these Me Too movements, whatever. They can kiss my ass while I fart. That's all I got to say. Anyway, let's go. <laughs> God. I love that Francis York Morgan is talking about these movies. That he's talking about the movies, that he's bringing these movies' influences throughout the game. That's kind of cool, man. Oh, Man on Fire. Yeah. Oh, fuck, dude. Man on Fire. Tony Scott. How many movies he made with Tony Scott? Which is a brother of, of Ridley Scott. I love them Scott brothers, man. Fucking great directors. Yeah, I mean, they made some amazing fucking movies in the past. Um... I think he made a bunch of movies. Uh, Man on Fire in 2004. Was it 2004? It's a great fucking movie, man. Man on Fire. And of course, uh, there's another movie. I really love this one. This one is really fucking epic. Also directed by Tony Scott. So he worked with Tony Scott. His brother made three or four movies. And then he made another movie with his brother... Ridley Scott. So he made five movies with Scott Brothers. Scott Free Pictures. That's fucking amazing. Um, but there's one movie that's really fucking good. In 96, 97, was it? 96? Or was it 95? I forgot. Crimson Tide. Oh, Crimson Tide, man. Him and uh, what's his name? Um, that actor that was in... Um, in Superman and uh, what you call it, The French Connection, Gene Hackman, Gene Hackman, fucking great movie, man. Crimson Tide, what a great fucking movie, man. They don't make movies like that anymore. What a fucking epic movie. Virtuosity with, hey, they work together. Hold on. The younger version of um, Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe was, that's his first movie, younger version of Russell Crowe. He, that's the first time they were together. So, you're right. Somebody was arguing with me a long time ago saying, this is the first time that Russell Crowe and Denzel Washington are working together. I said, no, not true. They worked together before in Virtuosity. Virtuosity, remember? He played the bad guy, Russell Crowe. So they worked twice in American Gangster and Virtuosity. So they worked twice, two times. 
I know. What's going on with him, dude? I don't know. What, what happened to him? I don't know, man. I think he just doesn't give a shit anymore. I don't know. Maybe... I don't like that he has done that. He needs to, like, get back on that horse, man. man come on. You're Russell fucking Crow, dude. You're Maximus Decimus Aurelius. The Prince of Rome. The Great General. <laughs> come on, man. Whatever. Like... I'm just saying Russell Crowe needs to get back on the horse. He needs to, like, um, him and Ridley Scott need to get back together. Uh, this movie he's releasing, it's, uh, it's straight to the DVD. It's kind of garbage movie, you know. It's uh, this, this woman pulled in front of him. She was on the phone. It was an accident. I mean, she didn't do it on purpose, and he got pissed off that she didn't apologize. All right, dude, it happens. People sometimes, you know, let it go. Who gives a shit? But no, he sees that she's there with a little girl and he's an asshole. He's rolling down his window on his truck. You mommy better tell me to apologize. And then he's got this sudden thick accent. You mommy better apologize to me. Make her apologize to me. I'm going to teach you, little girl, how to apologize. I got this Dodge Ram, this big fucking big fat truck. You better watch out. I don't know, man. I, I don't think that role fits him. I think the movie's gonna suck. I'm gonna watch it anyway, but I think the movie's gonna fucking suck. What was it called? Unhinged? Or some shit like that. I don't want to judge the movie because I haven't seen it. I'm gonna watch it. But the trailer tells me everything I need to know. Like, dude, who, who the fuck gives a fuck? Do you know how many times people pull in front of me? I get it. They're on their cell phones. They're, you know, looking for the GPS coordinations. You know, they're trying to find uh, the street address. They're delivering the medicine. They're delivering the food. They're the Uber drivers. I get it. I'm not going to get all fucking worked up if somebody pulls in front of me without a signal light. You know, I'm going to be the fuck. You know what I'm going to tell you? <clears throat> you know, that road rage shit doesn't fucking work, man. And I don't, I think the movie's going to suck. I think the movie is going to suck, man. And I don't know why Why Russell Crowe... Does he really need money? Maybe he does. I, I heard he was selling a lot of shit. Like, he had like a yard sale. He was selling all of his shit. Maybe he's hurting, dude. Maybe... I don't know, dude. Something happened to Russell Crowe. I don't know. He's not making movies with, Scott, with Ridley Scott. And I don't know what the fucking deal is, dude. I don't know. But anyway. Anyway. Right? Nine out of ten people will name those titles when you ask them to think of a film set in New Orleans. They're all excellent movies, but to me, they lack realism. Okay, what is the one movie that was set in New Orleans and John Woo directed it? Quick, let's go, guys. A movie that was filmed in New Orleans and John Woo directed it, 1993. Come on, guys. Come on. Come on now. Come on. Come on. It was 1993. The same time Jurassic Park was opened. Come on. John Woo movie. Oh, come on, guys. Oh, come on, stop Googling, damn it. I'll tell you. Yeah, Hard Target. Yes, Hard Target. It was Lance Hendrickson and uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme. And there's another chick that was in that movie. She's pretty cool. She was also in the movie with Wesley Snipes, Drop Zone or something. It was filmed down here in Florida. Um, so... That was 1993 in New Orleans, and uh, there was a pretty good fucking fight scene. Uh, there was a lot of great action in that movie. Hard Target was pretty fucking good. Even today, when you watch Hard Target, it's pretty fucking good movie, man. Even to, to this day, it's fucking awesome. And Mission Impossible too. I think jo John Woo, man, really, let me tell you. Hard Target and Mission Impossible 2 fucking good man those scenes were done really well 
executed really well. Uh, fucking good, man. Uh, face off. Broken arrow. Broken arrow, dude. John Travolta. Broken arrow. That was pretty good, too. And then you got face off. Face off. Remember John Travolta, Nick Cage, and face off. Face off. John Woo made some good fucking movies, man. Fucking A, man. Okay, millennials, you really have nothing. I mean, this is embarrassing. It's getting really pathetic at this point. <laughs> Listen, I mean, really, come on, guys. I mean, what do they have? Uh, Twilight? What? No. Let me see. Uh, I don't know. What movies do they have? Oh, the Glee show. Oh, yeah, the Glee. That's the only thing you guys have is Glee. Glee! Nothing, man. Nothing, bro. Yeah, even even the music today, it's about... I got my hose in different area codes. Skit, skit. You want to watch that booty shake? Let it rain. Shake it like it's hot. Make it drop. I mean, it's just like the same old, same old. You look at my bling bling. Look at my bling bling. Bling, 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 bling. Bling, bling, bling. <sighs> booty drop. Shake the booty like it's hot. Let the panties drop. Make it rain. Because I'm not an alien. But I'll make it rain. <sighs> Goddamn clowns, man. I agree. All right, let's continue with this. Due to my line of work, I have a tendency to think deeply about what feels real and what doesn't. What's your point? Oh, dude. Oh, my God. Isn't this weird? We were just talking about some of these new movies. And then he says, I have a good instinct feelings to know what feels real and what doesn't feel real. Dude, this is bizarre. We were just having this conversation. Cat people. I didn't know that. Dude. I did not know that Cat People was filmed in New Orleans. In in Louisiana. I had no fucking idea. A lot of fucking movies filmed in Louisiana. Holy shit. Cat People, yeah. Cat People, that's right. Malcolm McDowell and that uh that 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 chick, what's her name? Um Kinsky something. Uh, fucking A, dude. Cat people. Yeah. That's my point. Cat people. I just realized that. 1982. Directed by Paul Schrader. Paul Schrader. That's right, 1982. Crowning achievement of Nastasia Kinski, the Nastasia Kinski, the yes, 80s. the ultimate muse of the eighties. You hear that, millennials? You need to play this game. Play this game. Play it. Oh, Braveheart! Oh my God! You know we can do this all night long. We can do this the entire twenty twenty. And don't even get me started with the TV shows and the, the pop music and all that. The culture. Ah. Oh. All of the Eddie Murphy stuff. Oh my God. All of the, uh, what you call it. Even George Carlin stuff. And uh, who else? Uh, Bill Hicks and Jesus Christ. Uh, the list goes on and on and on. Mel Gibson. Hell yeah, dude. Mel Gibson uh, with Kurt Russell. Yeah, they work together. Him and Kurt Russell. People say, are you sure that Mel Gibson and Kurt Russell, they played brothers with Michelle Pfeiffer. I said, I know that, that Kurt Russell and Mel Gibson played together in, um, I think it was a Santa Barbara or Santa Monica or Venice Beach, somewhere out there in Southern California 
in Orange, I mean Orange County or LA County. I'm sorry, LA County. They filmed this uh, this movie called Sunrise Something, Sunrise, some kind of a Sunrise Bar or what the fuck was it? Oh, Tequila Sunrise, Tequila Sunrise, Tequila Sunrise. That's what it was. Kurt Russell, Mel Gibson, and um, Michelle Pfeiffer. I know my shit. I know my shit. The most vital element of that movie is the reality it depicts. Leopards who turn into humans have intercourse with humans and turn back into leopards. Oh yeah, man. Those are the good times, man. Uh, fuck. You look at the New Jack City, uh, Boys in the Hood, even that movie, man. Jesus Christ. Cuba Gooding Jr., the way he played that scene in the Boys in the Hood, it's fucking amazing. Uh, New Jack City, I already mentioned that. Uh, Action Jackson, King of New York, which is Christopher Walken. Uh, great stuff, man. Oh, Dream On was great. Fucking A. How about Guns N' Roses? You Could Be Mine. That fucking song is just fucking crazy. That was great. You could be mine. Yeah. Michael Jackson, yeah. Then they can only turn back into humans again if they mutilate their lovers. Michael Malcolm McDowell was in there. Malcolm McDowell. I was awestruck by the sheer reality of it all. Understand? I'm talking about hyperrealism. Yes, hyperrealism, dude. I get you. After watching it, I felt like I just had to experience the world of cat people for myself. That's why I decided to visit New Orleans. I did not know the cat people was from New Orleans. Hold on. I want to see this, man. If this is true. Hold on. Let me see. Cat people. Was cat people in New Orleans? He was. Yes, yes, New Orleans, man. Cat people was in New Orleans. kidding dude there's the same building they're showing it from the movie cool anyway what's up Luke how you doing bro dude we got into movies here us and Francis York Morgan got us into this conversation about the movies and, you know, when we start talking movies from the 80s, 90s, and forget today's movies, which are garbage, millennial garbage, uh, dude, they can't even hold a glass of water to, to those juggernauts of heavyweights that we have, man. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And it's interesting because this character, it's in New Orleans, this uh, agent, York Morgan, it's in New Orleans, and he started talking about all these movies that was filmed in New Orleans. He talked about Pelican Brief. He talked about the Cat People. Um, so uh, it was interesting to kind of like see his point of view. And of course, Live and Let Die was filmed in uh, New Orleans. Uh, oh 
Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um. Okay. Hold on. And I thought my jokes were bad. Mm. Oh, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Now, why do you want to hear me with, oh yeah, hmm? Why not just, what happened? Your balls dropped off, hmm? Oh yeah. Aerosmith. The balls never dropped off, not mine. Because if my balls dropped off, this whole thing could blow out of proportion. We can't have my balls dropping off. Mm -hmm. Now, the squealer over here, he might squeal. And I know, the Batman will find him. He will squeal. And um, this um, group therapy session here, they will squeal too. I promise you. Ah, so let's go. Another vital element of cat people? Man, we're still talking about a cat people. It's the presence of Malcolm McDowell. Yes, Malcolm McDowell. You see, I know my shit. I told you, he was Malcolm McDowell. Malcolm McDowell from Blue Thunder. Oh, yes. A masterpiece. Roy Scheider. Dude, Roy Scheider. I know Blue Thunder. Roy Scheider. Fucking A. You want to bet? Roy Scheider? Here we go. The guy from Jaws. Roy Scheider. Listen carefully, David. Only an amateur would call A Clockwork Orange his best movie. His best movies are Cat People and Blue Thunder. Um, I don't know about that. I like Cat People. I like Blue Thunder. But come on, man. Clockwork Orange? That's one of his best. I mean, Jesus. The most iconic. So, uh... I think you're wrong, York Morgan. I disagree. I like to turn the clock back a year these mob dealers <clears throat> wouldn't dare double cross any of you I mean what happened your balls dropped off so no you are wrong dude you are wrong uh, yes I like cat people I like blue thunder opposite Roy Scheider Malcolm McDowell but come on the clockwork orange Stanley Kubrick that's a masterpiece bro come on now come on come on Period. The millennials never heard of Clockwork Orange. It's a masterpiece by the great Stanley Kubrick. They don't even know who Stanley Kubrick is, man. They're like, who, who is that? Who is that? I never heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking A, I love one, one, one flow of the cuckoo's nest. I love that shit, man. I love it, man. Jack Nicholson. Come on, man. Fucking Jack Nicholson, dude. It's Jack. You know. Jack Nicholson. How could you not like Jack Nicholson? I mean, he's great. Fucking Jack Nicholson, man. You just say the word Jack Nicholson, and that's all you need to know. I mean, it's a fucking legend, you know. Uh, so, yeah. One flew with the cuckoo's nest. Oh, fucking A, man. Fucking A. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a sad movie because what happens to him at the end, you know. Uh, spoilers warning. A great fucking movie, man. So many great actors in it. Uh, it was fucking awesome. It's, it's a classic. Listen, it's a classic movie. You can't touch that shit. Nobody ever. You shouldn't even dare. I don't want to hear it. Remake. I don't want to hear the fucking word remake ever again. Ever again. Did you see the disaster 
called Remake Robocop. What a terrible disaster that turned out to be. With all their technology and all this shit, still, they couldn't hold a glass of water to the original Robocop. Yes. Even Paul Rehoven says he felt he shouldn't have done a sequel. They asked him to do a sequel. He said no, because he felt, how do I create something that's so good as the first movie? You can't. That's why he never did State Troopers 2. He's smart. Paul Verhoeven was smart. And he agrees. Like, hey, dude, this is classic. I can't. I can't top this. I just can't. So he felt the same thing with Starship Troopers. Like Basic Instinct. I can't top what I did in the first movie with, with a sequel. Same thing with, uh, uh, what you call it, uh, that fucking movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, Total Recall. The movie with Arnold, Total Recall. You can't... You can't do a sequel with Total Recall. And then they try to do a remake with a Total Recall. Fucking disaster. This is why I respect Paul Verhoeven for not making sequels. Because he knows, hey, I cannot top what I achieved here. You know? I can't top this. And he's right. Schnitzelinator. This is my favorite Schnitzelinator movie. This is my favorite movie too. The, 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 the Running Man. The, the Running Man was a good movie too. But the, the Running Man was doing too much running over there. The, the, there's this, the um, there's all these funny correct characters in the Running Man. There's another the character in the movie. Um, his name was Mysterio. No Mysterio. There was another different name. There's a big fat bastard with the chainsaw. He was trying to, to cut my balls. I said, you're not cutting my balls, you bastard. I'm going to cut your balls with the chainsaw. And you're going to squeal, you bastard. Remember that scene when the guy comes in with a chainsaw? The Electro. Not the Mysterio. Ele Electro man. Whatever. And he pulls him in. Stick around. <laughs> And the other guy, when, when he shoves him somewhere, says, you need to cool off. You need to cool off. <laughs> Get a cool off over here. Running Man was classic. Raw Deal was awesome. Um, fuck, Conan the Barbarian, all those movies, man. You need to remember this, because it's the truth. Hey, man, I got five kids to feed. And he goes like, "What happened to the? F oh, no, what happened to the sixth one? No, what happened to the fourth one? No, or something? What the fuck was it? I got five kids to feed. No, no, no. I remember. I remember when he lost his, when his three fingers came out, and his fake five fingers came down, and his three fingers came out. And he goes, "Man, I got three children to feed. He goes, what happened to the other two? And then he still, he still killed him." No, no, he says, yeah, he says, man, I got three kids to feed. And they go, and then the Arnold goes like, what happened to the other two? And he's like, mm. <laughs> That's fucking great, man. Mm, whatever you say, mister. Commander was great, man. So, uh, what's your point again? <clears throat> Never mind, don't worry about it. I already covered all the important parts. Alright. Let's get back to this. How can I get around the town? By the way, Mr. FBI, I ain't seen a car in the parking lot. Maybe I should use a skateboard. If there's a scooter or a skateboard or something, I don't know, or a bicycle. How'd you get all the way out here, huh? Don't tell me you won't. That's a very good question. Chef David, you've got a sharp eye. It's true that I didn't park my car in your parking lot. Do you know why? Can't say I do. Because it was stolen. Huh? Cobra was great, man. 
And that guy from a blood sport would play the bad guy. Uh, what's his name? Uh, by the way, he's still acting. He did this one movie uh, about the Bigfoot. I don't know. It's like straight to the DVD, straight to the Netflix or whatever, straight to the Amazon Prime. Um, like a low budget B movie. He's the guy that like a. Um, he's the guy that's gonna fly out these uh, groups of people on this expedition to find the Bigfoot and whatever. I haven't seen the movie, but I, I know it's that he's in it. He played the bad guy in, in the Cobra, and he also played the guy. Uh, with that chick in the blood sport was the blood sport or it was um, Heart of a lion or what the fuck was the lion heart? Um, Jean-Claude Van Damme, uh, I think so Yeah Yeah, this guy was like uh, looked like like German dude like a blonde hair or Swedish he looked like Swedish bro um, the guy from the fucking uh, the Cobra, you know that dude with a crazy, crazy look on his face. Um, what the fuck is his name? I can't believe I forget these uh, these names, man. But you with the FBI, right? <clears throat> Even FBI cars can be stolen. Yeah, Brian Thompson. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, he's still acting, by the way. Yeah, he's the nicest guy. Like, people tell me, yes, he played some bad guys, uh, characters in the movie because it fits his role. But in real life, people say he's like the, the sweetest dude, man. He's like the nicest guy ever, you know. Um, but he did a pretty good job playing those roles, you know, as an actor could happen after you park your car on oh, the yeah. side it of the was road pretty and go muscular to do some leg work. Back in the 80s, everybody was working out, dude. That was really like uh, the whole trend started, man, with Sylvester Stallone, Arnold, uh, especially with the Arnold Schwarzenegger, and, and Stallone with Rambo and Terminator. Everybody started kind of, you know, pushing the muscles and Jean-Claude Van Damme. Everybody was just like, you know, let's go. Let's let's put on some fucking muscles. Uh, it was like a muscle era, dude, for real. Jim Willard, uh, Jim in uh, Venice Beach, you know. So yeah, that was back then. It was like the the muscle era. Oh, d double impact was fucking great. Oh, Charles Bronson, Death Wish, fucking hey, Mal. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Doctor Ian Ian Malcolm. Uh, was in the uh, was in that movie. He played a bad guy. Nobody knew. I was like, people didn't know that uh, Jeff Goldblum played a bad guy in uh, in a Death Wish. People say, no, you wrong. I said, no, I'm not wrong. IMDb right now. Jeff Goldblum played the bad guy in uh, in Death Wish. It's it's in there. Look it up. When you're eating lunch, when you're watching a movie, when you're asleep at night. When you're buying cigarettes at the local supermarket, your car can be stolen anywhere. That's precisely what it means to be an FBI agent. In my case, my car was stolen while I was on my way down here. But no need to worry. I already reported it to the local authorities. And I've also already acquired another mode of transportation. And what could that be? Another mode? Skateboard, maybe? Bicycle? Scooter? I don't know. Skateboard, scooter? I don't know. What the fuck? Want to hear the details? Not really. But I'll listen if you want me to. No, I'm playing on um, my CG90. My CG90 uh, ultra wide. 50-inch uh, monitor, which is a vertical alignment QLED monitor with 144 refresh rate with a FreeSync 2, and uh, one millisecond response time. Woohoo! Display port, obviously. Uh, 
I don't know, man. Maybe a bicycle, scooter, or I don't know, skateboard. I guess you can use a skateboard. I mean, what else are you going to use? Then please do. After I finished my work in Houston, I flew to New Orleans. Hmm. Then I rented a car at the airport. Whenever I visit the West Coast, I always rent a convertible, especially in California. But now I'm in hot and sticky Louisiana. So I decided on a brand new hybrid car with a fully equipped air conditioning system. A hybrid car? What? He had a hybrid car? Oh yes, they're marvelous. Vehicles that utterly defy everything you think you know about cars. Electric cars better, man. Ah, speaking of electric cars, they're building more charging stations, man, across Florida. Uh, that's pretty cool, man, because more and more people are buying electric cars. And I think pretty, I think by 12 years from now, we'll see, dude, more and more cars, electrical, electric, electric solar panels, electric. People going to go for cleaner air. You'll see less and less fuel being used. You'll see more and more electrical cars. Trust me. Oh, yeah, they'll have to, man. Jeff Goldblum is a, it's another legend, man. The Fly, the Jurassic Park, the Lost World. Um, fuck. But, uh, you know, you got to start somewhere. You know, as an actor, they're always going to give you a shitty role. Sometimes you have to play a shitty role. I'm pretty sure he didn't like that role because it was a gruesome scene, you know, uh, him attacking the Charles Bronson's family, going in there, going after his daughter the whole rape scene and all that and you know but that's his first movie his first gig to be in um in the death wish and of course due to the death wish the doors have opened up for jeff goldblum to to make other movies sometimes you have to do a shitty movie it's probably uh the the, the character you're gonna hate and you have to play that fucking character but because of that character look at him now you know what i mean Look look at Jeff Goldblum now, like how far he has come, yeah. What do I think about the Microsoft show in 23rd? There could be a surprise that the console, it's not going to be 500, but um, 400. That could be a surprise. $400 for Xbox One S Series uh, X, I'm sorry. Series X. And 300 for S. Uh, Lockhart. Lockhart 300. And Xbox Series X 400. And PlayStation 5 with a 4K Blu ray player. 400. Without the 4K Blu ray player, digital 300. I don't know. Maybe some of you guys should think about the digital version. I don't know. I mean, I'll definitely go with a, with a 4K Blu ray version. You know me. Uh, but that's a pretty good price, four hundred dollars for a four K Blu Ray version. You know, that's a pretty good fucking deal, if you ask me. So I think you guys will be surprised pleasantly with four hundred dollars instead of five hundred. But I could be wrong. I could be super wrong, dude. You know. But I've been hearing some real, some real good rumors. I've been having tryouts. And expanding this PlayStation aggressive expansion of four hundred dollars, so I think you might be surprised that it's four hundred for a four K Blu Ray version and three hundred for digital version, which is a pretty good fucking deal, if you ask me. I mean, even for X Series uh, X, four hundred dollars. What that? you know, console has in terms of sheer power, uh, that's a pretty good deal, man, for $400. If it's true, if it's true, that's fucking steel. Then shortage, fucking guaranteed shortage till 2021 April or, or March or whatever. I don't know, man. I'm thinking about, I was talking to... Uh, 
I was actually I was talking to my brother about this. Like, do I even need a 4K? Because I have a 4K Blu-ray. And do I buy physical media? Even this game I couldn't find on physical media. I've I downloaded digitally. I can always put a hard drive with a Nintendo Switch. You know what I mean? Hook it up to the USB. Um Do I need it? You know, it's the question. Do I really need a physical? Because you still have to install the game. It's not like you reading the game from a disc. You still have to... And now, 4K Blu-ray player, bro. I already got a 4K Blu-ray player. I got Oppo UDP 203. It's the best of the best. The, anything better than 203, it's a 205. Uh, it's more advanced in terms of audio. But... Oppo UDP 203, I mean, I got the, the best kick-ass 4K UHD player that you can think of. Uh, what more do I need? So do I need it? And I already got Xbox One X. I already got a second 4K Blu-ray player. What do I need three 4K Blu-ray players? Uh, I don't need it, man. And I got a portable uh, 4K Blu-ray player on my laptop. So, dude, I'm all good, man. I might, I might go with a digital, dude. I don't know. I'm really thinking. I'm thinking about it, dude. But most likely, I'm gonna go with a with a 4K Blu-ray. If the price is 400, if it's 400, then fuck, why not? I'll go with it, man. Fuck it, you know. But I don't know. I I do change my mind quickly, guys. As you all know, I can change my mind super fucking quickly. And you'll see that on Monday. I'll be like, oh fuck, what happened? I thought you're gonna go with a with a 4K version. You know, you're getting. You're getting a digital version. What the fuck? Yeah. But most likely, I'll go with a 4K Blu-ray because, I don't know. It's nice to have an extra 4K Blu-ray player, dude. It's nice. I'm just saying it's nice. It's nice. It's fucking nice. It's nice to have that extra Blu-ray player. Why not? Why the fuck not, right? I'm just saying. But that's just me. That's just me. That's just me, you know. Anyway, let's go, guys. Let's continue. Now, in the year 2005, it feels like we finally entered the 21st century. Yeah, with a Hurricane Katrina, definitely. Stomp down on the gas all you want. The engine won't make a sound. It's silent. Sony's investment into Epic. I'm not surprised, honestly. Because... Sony always had a great relationship with Epic. We've seen uh, games like Heavy Rain, Beyond Two Souls, uh, this partnership, but it's mainly for the Fortnite, something with the Fortnite they're doing. Uh, and of course, um, Death Stranding, and um, which I'm going to do this, uh, this coming Tuesday, Death Stranding. You know, I want to check it out. On a PC, through Shadow, through Shadow. I want to, I want to see how it runs on Shadow. Um, and then uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. It's also going to be available on the Epic Store. It's, it's good. I think it's good they're going to do that. I think it's great to, to play God of War on the PC, to see how God of War runs on the PC, to see how Spider Man runs on the PC. Uh, to compare it with a PlayStation 5 to see The Last of Us Part 2 or the first Last of Us on a PC to see what we can do. Uh, I think th there's there's something to that. And I like that. You know, I like it, bro. So, But we'll see. We'll see. I think it's a, I think it's a good thing. I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's a good thing. Ooh, Unreal Tournament coming back? Hell yeah, bro. Unreal Tournament. Oh, really? Well, I'm glad you're letting people know, Luke. 
Uh, I didn't know that about uh, Panasonic. I thought Panasonic supposed to be the best there is currently, but looks like it's not. Uh, I'm so glad that I was able to get my Oppo on t in 2017 before they canceled it, uh, the production. Because it's such a great fucking player. So many features built into that 4K player, man. Such, I mean, uh, I could go on and on and on. I think I did it like a 47-minute video talking about the Oppo UDP203 in front of my television. I think I still have that. Uh, it's on my YouTube channel in 2017. I think it was uh, October or September or August or se September or something like that. Uh, Might have been August. Talking about the Oppo UDP and all its all of its features juggernauts of features that the Oppo UDP203 has and man that that 4k player I'm still amazed even to this day man I was like wow I mean wow just wow it even has HDR pass-through bro pass-through so that means you can connect your uh, Apple TV or your console, it'll have a HDR pass-through with a 4K. Meaning you can run PlayStation through your Oppo or your Xbox through your Oppo with a 4K HDR because it has a pass-through. Fucking awesome, dude. At first, I felt like the landscape was moving past me on its own. Oh, that's ridiculous. Yeah, don't buy that model. Go with the one that's five hundred dollars. That's the one that's well. Do you want to? Sp Here's the thing. Okay, this is a good question. Okay, I'm glad that that, we, that I just mentioned this because uh, I'm not here to judge. I'm not here to judge. It's your money. Do what you like with your money. But here's what I want to say. Just hear me out. And remember, I'm not judging. I get it. If you are a home theater enthusiast, if you are a videophile enthusiast, and you want to have the best of the best, I get it. It's a hobby. It's a very expensive hobby. I'm not here to judge. I get it. Money is not an issue because that's your hobby. But for a regular Joe, for a regular Mary, for a regular guy, for a regular chick, don't get offended I called you a chick. For a regular woman, okay? I don't want the SJWs coming after me with the pitchforks. Um, PlayStation 4 Pro. PlayStation 4, I mean, not PlayStation 4. PlayStation 5. Not only do you get a kick-ass gaming system, with HDMI 2.1, but you also get 4K USD Blu-ray built into it. So why not spend $400 on a console that's going to let you play your favorite video games, upcoming video games, PlayStation VR 2, and you can watch 4K movies, plus it has applications built into it. So why would you spend $500 on some Panasonic Blu-ray player when you can just buy for $400 you can buy a PlayStation 4 PlayStation 5 I'm sorry PS5 I have to get used to it PS5 PS5 console or XSX X Series X when you can buy PS5 and XSX which is X Series X so PS5 and XSX or you can just buy Xbox One X with a 4K USD Blu-ray player. Or Xbox One S with a 4K USD player. But I get it. If you are a home theater enthusiast, if you are a videophile guy, then I get it. You know, the money's not an issue. But I'm simply saying, for everyday Joe, everyday Schmo, uh, they're going to go with the PlayStation 5. I remember with, with PlayStation 2, Everybody was buying PlayStation 2 instead of Toshiba 
uh, DVD players, instead of Panasonic DVD players, instead of RCA DVD players. They were like a $250, $300, they're super fucking expensive DVD players in 2000. Why would you spend $300 on a DVD player when you can just buy a PlayStation 2? Because PlayStation 2 had built-in DVD player, plus a, a kick-ass console. And totally makes sense. That's why the PlayStation 2 was the, the highest selling console back then. Because it plays these awesome video games. And it lets you play DVD movies. For the same price that you would normally pay for a DVD player. That's why those DVD players didn't stand a chance. Toshiba didn't stand a chance. RCA didn't stand a chance. Uh, Panasonic didn't stand a chance. Even Sony didn't stand a chance. Why? Because... You got PlayStation 2. So same thing with this. You know what I mean? If you are not videophile guy, if you are not um, home theater enthusiast, then regular Joe, regular Schmo doesn't care. You know. Give it a few more years, and I'm sure we'll start seeing cars that run purely on electricity. Yes, they are going to run electricity. You ain't kidding. Who knows? In a decade or so, electric sports cars may end up lining the parking lots of Silicon Valley. I can see it now. It's the world of The Last Starfighter. Oh, I remember that movie, The Last Starfighter, 1990... 1990, I think it was. 1990. I remember that movie. I still had my Commodore. Or was it 1989? I think it was 1989. I still had my Commodore 64 and there was a game uh, named after that movie. Uh, played it, played Paperboy, played Frogger, played uh, Track and Field, Predator, Robocop, played Robocop, played Batman uh, on... Um, I did play the Batman on the Commodore 64. Uh, you have to put in a cassette. Basically, the way I ordered the games was there was this company, there was this uh, Commodore 64 magazine, and you buy this magazine, you subscribe to this magazine, and you go through this magazine, and you look at the games that are coming out, you look at the current games that they have available, and you read the review about these games, and then you can make a list of the games that you want this company to upload on the tape. On this cassette tape and then they're gonna ship it to you and they ship it to you with all these games and you put the cassette in there you have to adjust the head a little bit you you load it up and it says system ready and then the game loads up and you're good to go that was Commodore 64 and I clearly remember that man having my Commodore 64 it's a pretty good movie though I liked it I mean the CGI is ridiculous I mean <laughs> it's like you look at the CGI in compared to what they have today, but it was pretty good for that time, you know Still it was more fun than any other garbage that they put out today. Honestly, it was still more fun Dude here it's like Fucking raining like crazy, but this is normal for this is tropics dude. This is the time in Florida July, August, September, the tropic rain, the storms, the hurricanes, and all this other shit. It's just like fucking crazy. 1984, directed by Nick Castle. It's famous for being the first film to utilize realistic CG, but I couldn't care less about that. See, I was mesmerized by the beautifully refined mech designs. It even made me wish that I could be one of them myself. You know, I, we just forgot the Tron. Tron and the Tron Legacy, right? <laughs> Tron, yeah, that movie as well. Especially the Gunstar spacecraft. No other sci-fi movie has ever had. So, uh, yeah, where'd your hybrid car get stolen? Sorry, I got off topic. I noticed it was missing after I finished my lunch and walked out of the diner. Incidentally, this diner was located at the entrance to a small town just south off the I-10. 
I-10. Oh, I definitely remember that interstate. The I-10 interstate will take you directly to California, man. You have to go through Texas, East, West Texas. Then you got to go hook up to uh, New Mexico. After New Mexico, you got to go through a uh, bunch of desert, white sand. Uh, and, of course, you got to go through Roswell, Roswell, UFOs. Uh, and then after that, you hook up to Arizona. And from Arizona, you good to go to California. You good to go, man. Oh no, you have to go. I'm sorry, you have to go through Nevada, through Nevada, and then boom, there you go. I think. Well, did I go? Just go straight. No, the 15 takes you to Nevada. The the 10 will take you directly to California. But there's a 15 Interstate 15 that goes also to Nevada, but the 10 will take you straight up to uh, California. Oh, man. Never again, dude. That's the longest fucking drive. Five fucking days, dude. Longest fucking drive. But it's it's nice to go on a road trip, guys. It's nice to go on a road trip, to see the America, to see the beauty of this country, man. It's good to do that, man. Believe me. Um, then you'll appreciate this country even more. It's like, wow, look at this beauty, you know. I went out to get back in it, but my hybrid car was nowhere to be found. So these 800 miles an hour trains, maybe it's not a good thing because sometimes, unless you're in a hurry, but sometimes it's good to see the country, man, just to, to, to see the nature, the beauty of it. I, I think people forget, man. People forget where they live and they don't realize like just how beautiful some of these regions are, man, when you go through through the country. You know what I mean? I remembered exactly where I parked it. Right between a blue pickup truck and a hedgerow. But when I came back from lunch, it had completely vanished. In short, someone stole it. Who did stole it? And in its place, they left me this. What could they leave you? A bicycle, a scooter, maybe a skateboard or a scooter, or a bicycle, or electrical scooter, or electrical, electrical skateboard. What? Oh fuck! It is a skateboard. What the? F a skateboard. Hmm. A skateboard? Yes. While I was sliding my lunch into my stomach. Someone was busy replacing my brand new hybrid car with a wooden board attached to four wheels. Remarkable, don't you think? So then how did you get here? By riding the skateboard, obviously. Why do you... No, I couldn't ride the board very well at first. But by the 10-mile mark, I'd even learned to do a few tricks. It was a journey of self-discovery. Not even I knew I had this latent talent sleeping inside me. Well, good for you. When you say it was like something from a TV show, what exactly do you mean? Hey, mister, why do you look so excited, huh? <laughs> like a kid asking grandma to read him a fairy tale. I just can't seem to keep myself away from young women who died in bizarre ways. You're a strange puppy, Francis York Morgan. Yeah. Well, I ain't seen it with my own eyes, but folks say they found the body hanging under a bridge on the bayou. Maybe it's uh, Sam Jackson's uh, cousin or something, or maybe his brother. You never know, man. 
And under that bridge, there was some kind of altar. An altar? Like something they use in black magic. Something horrible. Voodoo? Nah. Wasn't nothing like that. Just a weird altar. That's all? Oh, and the body was all cut up in pieces. Scattered around the altar like. So she was sacrificed. That's what the fella who discovered her said, yeah. Bingo, Zack. This case has got our names all over it. This summer's gonna be another hot one. It's supposed to get over 95 today. Today was a hundred, man. Forget 95. Today it felt like a hundred and five. Watch well, out, you don't go getting heat stroke. Nah, we'll be fine. He reminds me... This guy reminds me of uh, Guns of the Patriot. The... Uh, the military gun merc, you know, they were selling guns and whatnot, uh, and the equipment to Solid Snake, the old snake. He had this monkey with him, and he had this like armored car, and he was selling him all kinds of weapons. And he sounds like him, dude. It's exactly like him. The least Clarkson case needs us. Don't you think so, Zack? Of course, Zack. Of course. The cat people are what guided us to New Orleans. We should be thanking Malcolm McDowell. That's hilarious. Once we get home, let's watch Blue Thunder again. You know, I want to watch that movie now, dude. I want to watch the uh, fucking Blue Thunder. Plus, I need to find it. I'm already looking forward to it. Aren't you, Zack? This is so weird, man. Like, he's talking to his another imaginary friend. But they really exist. It's weird. They somehow are connected with each other. They communicate with each other telepathically. No, and I haven't, they haven't uh, said anything yet. And I'm still waiting for confirmation. Uh, I heard like pretty good rumors July 13th. Like very good rumors July 13th. But they haven't said anything yet. Which is, I don't know what Sony's waiting for, honestly. Um, I hope that it's not... Like... July 15th or 16th. Um, because then I won't be able to do it if it's July 16th. I hope it's July 17th on Ghost of Tsushima Day. And I don't know why Sony is waiting. Like, come on, you know, why they're milking it so bad, man? It's like this whole milking shit. I never seen a, a kind of bullshit like I did this year on top of everything else. That they're milking it and milking it and milking it and milking it. Just tell us the fucking price already. Tell us what's the price and when can we fucking pre-order it. I mean, what's the big deal? Why milk it? This milking shit, it's such horseshit. Really. The, I don't know who is in charge of this crap, but it's the dumbest decision ever. Tell us already which fucking date it is. And that way, let's get the price point, let's get the pre-orders, let's get the show on the road. I mean, what is this, you know, beating around the bush, jerking off, and let's just get it over with, you know. 
It's such a bullshit, man. You know? What's the old, what's the name of the old guy? Uh, they used to be the CEO. Jack Trent, right? Trent. That was his uh, last name. Jack Trent, right? He was a good CEO of uh, Sony. He would have never beat around the bush. He'll tell you exactly, okay, this is the date. Here's the price. Boom. Just like that. He walks out on the stage. Here is the price. Here's how much it is. Here's the date. Pre-order right now. Pre-orders are available right now. Thank you. Now enjoy the rest of the show. Why is that so difficult? Let's just do it like that. But this whole milking the fucking cow dry, you know, this bullshit, man. Yeah, it's so fucking stupid, man. Just release the damn thing. Just release it. Tell us the price. Like, it's like we don't know. Okay, it's either going to be 500 or 400 it's going to be either or. Pick and choose. So, you know. I don't know. It's, it's 2020, dude. Expect the unexpected. It's 2020. Isn't it interesting? We come to the point in our lives where all you have to say is 2020. And that's all you got to say. How was your day today? 2020. How you been? 2020. What are you doing tomorrow? 2020. So what are your plans uh, this summer? 2020. Like it's got to that fucking point. Like 2020. 2020. How was your day today? 2020. What are you doing tomorrow? 2020. What are your plans for holidays? 2020. Are you going to celebrate your birthday? 2020. What are we doing uh, tonight? 2020. What are we having for lunch tomorrow? 2020. It's fucking, it's fucking ridiculous, bro. The searing light. Mm, these scents. It's the deep south. Yes, deep south. All the Jedi must die. The last Jedi is gone. Yes, yes, Skywalker. <clears throat> Actually, they did eliminate the, the last Jedi. It's gone. <laughs> and uh, Kathleen Kennedy, she dropped out. Ah, oh, come on. She should have known better. That was a fabulous breakfast. You're the world's greatest chef. The Palpatine, yes. Yes, the Emperor. Palpatine. All the Jedi must die. Must die. All the Jedi must die. <laughs> what happened to Mr. Urban World, man? He said he's going to pick up that burger. He hasn't come back yet, like... Yeah, Disney, man. What Disney is doing is a bunch of bullshit. Uh, wait, mister. It keeps getting better and better with Disney, you know. Uh, we're gonna have uh, The Avengers. All female Avengers. All female Avengers. It's getting so fucking ridiculous, dude. But that's okay. I got my 80s movies. I got my 90s movies. I got my 70s movies. Fuck, even 60s movies. I'm all good, bro. I'm good. I'm good. Good. Ah, <clears throat> oh, man. No one's. That's why I don't watch this new crap. This new crap, this new diarrhea, man. You didn't take a single bite. Because we were talking, dude. We were talking, and plus this, uh, this crab looking cockroach like it's uh, looking at me kind of funny. 
of the tea was to die for. The tea was to die for. But I'd prefer coffee next time. Yes, dude, we love what coffee. What would be without coffee? York Morgan loves coffee. He loves coffee. The graphics are not that bad for Nintendo Switch. I don't know why is everybody bitching and moaning. Turn to York's room and review the case. Ah, there it is. This is my uh, pro controller. Not bad. Wait, what, are you, uh, what the fuck? Graphics are good. The graphics are good. Hello there. Can I talk to you? I want to talk to you. Why are you so angry? Why are you so angry? Why? Need something? Need something? Need something? Need something? Why can't you talk to NPCs, dude? I want to talk to you. Oh, the red room. Yeah. No, you can do that on a television. Uh, Samsung has that option. Uh, LG has that option. Um, you can easily do that, but you have to remember it's like um, you're cutting out, you're zooming in a little bit and cutting out certain layers of that scene. So you're gonna be missing some stuff on the left, and you're gonna be missing some stuff, some stuff on the right. Um, so, is it really worth it? I don't think so, honestly. Because that's the way the movie was invent, uh, in, meant for you to be seen. It's in that ratio. However, what Oppo can do is... Oppo has this ability for you to kind of squeeze in that, that format of that letterbox into 16 by 9 and fill in the screen. However, what happens is... Wait, here, I'll fucking tell you what happens. This is what happens. You start looking like this. Hold on. No, hold on. I was gonna, sh I was gonna show you something. Uh, I cannot do it here. But anyway, basically what I was going to say is... Like, my head becomes a bit longer. And I become a little bit more... Uh, wider. Wider and longer. It just becomes kind of weird. Uh, it doesn't look natural. It looks kind of weird. It looks stretch. Like everything stretched out. That's what she said. Stretching it, you know. Um, it's just not worth it, man. I, I mean, but hey, you know, whatever. I always tell people, whatever, whatever floats your boat. I'm not here to judge. I'm just here to tell you what you can do. What options you have available. Uh, it's up to you whether or not you use it don't use it uh, i don't recommend it because that's not how the filmmaker intended for you to watch the movie 
But hey, if that's what floats your boat, you know. Ah, uh, the Vice City, I don't know, man, if I'm gonna have time to do the Vice City, because I have Ghost of Tsushima, and then I got Mafia coming out, so, and then I got the Avengers. I don't know when I'm gonna be able to do uh, uh, Vice City, brother. I have no idea when I'm gonna be able to do that. That's something that's gonna have to take a little while for that. Um, you know. But we'll see. I don't know. I mean, maybe sometime in September after I finish the Avengers. Maybe I can do it in September, sometime in December, you know. But the biggest problem with the Grand Theft Auto is I have to turn off the soundtrack. I have to turn that music off because I cannot live stream with all those 80s music. And it's not going to be the same, guys. Uh, the YouTube doesn't allow that. They're gonna they're gonna remove my stream, uh, and I'm I can't take that risk, dude. And uh, and I don't want to do it without music. I mean, it's just gonna be stupid, you know. Playing Grand Theft Auto Vice City without music, I mean, it just kills the whole experience, you know. You know, I mean, yeah, it's just uh, I tried, man, to do it, and they. They removed that one video from Grand Theft Auto Vice City because there was Michael Jackson uh, song playing and there was uh, Phil Collins, Genesis, and uh, Tina Turner, and my God, a bunch of other bands, Queen, um, so I couldn't do it. Uh, Billy Idol was, was playing as well, White Wedding and all that jazz and and it sucks mc hammer can't touch this dun, 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 dun. hammer time uh it's just you know there's a lot of stuff missing um it would suck you have to turn off the music you have to turn off the whole thing and you just hear the the cars and people talking and splashing waves and it's just really kind of stupid you know Uh, the Twitch won't let me do it either there. I mean, you can't you can play music there either. I don't think so. Uh, they don't have that ability. They're, they're not paying royalty fee for music, so... I don't think you can do it on there either. Uh, yeah. I thought about it, believe me. And, uh... What is this? Rubber bullet? Rubber bullets got 50. Rubber bullets 50. Rubber bullets 50, 50. Small. Okay. Bre got the first aid kit and rubber bullets. All right. Oh, they're delayed September 25th. Ah, well. Then we're gonna, I don't know, man. We'll be playing Ghost of Tsushima indefinitely. <laughs> we'll be playing Ghost of Tsushima indefinitely. Well, we'll be playing Madden 21 a little bit. Uh, Madden 21's coming out. PGA Tour. Abby's Golf Tournament's coming out. So we'll be playing a little bit of that. You know. I don't know, dude. There's, if there was a way for me to play Grand Theft Auto Vice City, I would play it. But it's just difficult to play that game without soundtrack, man. You know. No, it's gonna be great, man. Um, that game's gonna be awesome. Ghost of Tsushima Island. It's gonna be awesome, dude. Oh, 
Oh, you can save the game here. Okay. Items, stamp. All right, that's good. So this is the red room right here. Here we go. Let's open it. Oh, that sucks, dude. Oh, man. Can you at least get it digitally? Can you uh, call the Sony and ask them if they can reimburse you for a digital version? This is why it's good to go digital, man. Because think about it, it's not like you are playing the game from the disc. You still have to install the game on your hard drive. Might as well get it digitally, brother. You know? At this point, the way things are, the way things are moving, I might as well get it digital, you know? It's probably the mechanism is broken. The, uh, the sucking in mechanism uh, that pulls it in, that, you know, magnetic uh, mechanism that goes in. Oh, look at that. It's a, it's a mirror. this oh this tells you where to go okay there's a red room here we go There he is, Mr. York. Mr. York. You look very so handsome. Rouge. We're chasing it all over America. Mm -hmm. I feel like we're finally on the verge of finding something now. Don't you, Zach? I think it's about time we ordered a new briefcase. Yes, I know this one carries a lot of memories, but it's seen too much. This hole's from the shootout in Tucson. And this stains from Miami. Hmm. Ah, Miami. Now that was a fascinating case. Billy, our perp, cut his own torso right in two. Even with the help of the drugs, a feat like that still requires incredible mental fortitude. I was so impressed that I forgot I'd left my briefcase on the floor. Same floor his blood gushed out onto. I know, Zach, I know. Now isn't the time for a trip down memory lane. Evidence organization start. An emergent drug that's been on the rise in four southern states. Saint Rouge. 
Personally, I think it originated right here in Louisiana. And these Clarkson's murder must be connected to it somehow. The 16-year-old girl who was murdered. Her body was found beneath a bridge over the bayou, along with a strange altar. So she was probably hooked on this drug. They call it Rouge, Saint Rouge drug. And then they lured her in with whatever drug dealers and then that's how she bumped into this family and then the rest is history. I'm just trying to put the evidence together. The powerful man who essentially controls the town of Lucare. And he seems to be more fearsome than your average gangster. I doubt he'll be willing to cooperate with any law enforcement, Zach. Evidence organized, so we got... We got the, uh, the drug. We got a lead on that. You know, I keep thinking about that movie we stopped to see on our way here, Zach. The Island, 2005, directed by Michael Bay. That movie was good, actually. I liked the, uh, that movie uh, with Michael Bay. It was pretty good, actually. That was, uh, what's her name? Um, McGregor, Ewan McGregor, and um, what's her name? Uh, pop, 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 pop. The, the Avengers girl, Natasha, what's her name? For a movie being shown at a cinema complex, it was surprisingly artistic. An experimental setting mixed with hard-hitting drama. It was art house sci-fi. That director's going to change the history of art house films. <laughs> Are you following me here? This is another special film that's setting a new standard, just like Star Wars and Blade Runner did. This is a turning point, Zach. You may be witnessing the birth of a vital new word that will soon become a part of film history. Yes, this single movie may be responsible for creating a whole new genre several years down the line. A genre known as island movies. I sure like the sound of that. Don't you, Island Zach? movies. So we met with this guy, cook, chef, David Jawada, a.k.a. Samuel Jackson. Lise Clarkson. She's connected to this drug, St. Rouge. And we need to find out who this Clarkson guy is, the big family running this place. So they are probably involved in this... Uh, drug dealing of this drug called Saint Rouge and that's how this whole murder it's connected to her and we're gonna find out so we have to find out who this uh, PJ Clarkson is Closet. I'm very satisfied with the decorations and the size of this closet, Zach. And it's even got a security box. What else could a man ask for? It's proof that we're still safely inside the fringes of modern civilization. You can use the closet to change the clothes 
and send the clothes out for dry cleaning. Okay. Well, that's cool. So if, if your clothes get dirty, you can actually... You can send them to a dry cleaning and clean them up. That's cool. Let me see. No, I'll go with the red. Looks better. Hold on. This is his signature. The hell is this? Like a predator. A toolbox. You can use the toolbox to store items, then take them back out later. You can only hold so many items on your person at once, so you'll need to utilize the toolbox sooner or later. You can only use the toolbox when you're standing near one, so be careful about which items you choose. Cool. Definitely I need the bullets. I got coffee. Uh, definitely more rubber bullets. All right, we got plenty of rubber bullets. Now you're gonna ask, why do you need the rubber bullets? Because we're gonna fight. We're going to fight these um, these demons. There's demons in this game. <clears throat> uh, it's you know what happened is there was a four hour. Um, this game is good because I played the first one. Uh, so I'm not kind of new to this game because I played the first one. But the reason we had a six hour live stream is because. Dude, there was this like a four hour dialogue uh, in the beginning between Zach and this um, Aliyah FBI agent. And dude, by the time we get to the opening, it took about like four hours, man. Four freaking hours. And so far. This is what we have. This is the lead. Uh, this drug called the Saint Rouge that has to do something with her murder. It's connected to her murder. And then we have this guy, PJ Clarkson, which runs the majority of the town. And uh, so all we need to go ahead is lead, take the lead of this Saint Rouge drug and find out about this uh, PJ Clarkson. So that's pretty much what we're doing. Now, remember, this game goes back and forth. There's two characters. Uh, you got the present character. Uh, his name is Zach. Zach, Franz Zach Morgan. Uh, and then you got another character, which is York, Francis York Morgan, which is this guy right here. There's two different characters. Now, in 2018, Zach Morgan, he has a tumor. He's dying. And the FBI agents, they're going through some of the cases that the York Morgan has been through. And they're asking Zach Morgan, because they think that Zach Morgan is the uh, York. Now, granted, Zach Morgan is, was, FBI agent. But he had an imaginary friend called York Morgan that helped him solve the cases. So this new FBI agent comes in asking Zach Morgan in 2018, this is 2005, this is 2005. So in 2018, present time, this agent is asking uh, Zach Morgan, uh, how did you solve these cases? Tell us about how you did it, da 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 da. 
So it's pretty interesting, man. But you gotta play the first game to truly understand who these characters are, the split personality of uh, identity that this character has. So there's two persons living inside Zach uh, Morgan. It's a York Morgan. Yeah. But it's pretty cool, man. It's a pretty good game. It's just one of those games where you um, you have to understand the story. You know, if you have never played the first game, then you're definitely not gonna get into it. But if you play the first game, then definitely you're gonna understand it. You know. And I'm definitely gonna take a. I'm gonna end it right here because uh, I want to continue this tomorrow because this is gonna be the better part because on this one now we're definitely getting into the story and learning about what happened in 2005 what happened in 2008 2007 that led to 2018 and uh, we're gonna find out throughout uh, throughout the game and you have to use a skateboard basically the way you travel throughout the game it's using a skateboard which is kind of funny hilarious because they stole they stole his electric car or not his electric car his um, uh, hybrid car not an electric car hybrid car they stole it yeah. <clears throat> and it's already weird because if you look at his chair look at his chair some kind of uh, Masonic Luciferian uh, chair he's got here some voodoo shit Definitely some voodoo shit. But it's pretty good. I mean, if you never played the first one, I definitely encourage you guys to check out the first game. The first game is pretty good, man. But you really gotta get into it. You gotta understand the story. And I love the first one, dude. The first one was really good. All right, guys, I'm going to have to get going. Six hours. It was a lot of fun, man. We talked about a lot of shit, a lot of stuff, movies. And this game talks about the movies, goes back in the, in the pop culture of the 80s. And uh, he also mentioned uh, some current movies of, two, or, well, the current movies of 2005. And it's true. The Island was released in 2005. I like that this game is exploring the, the movies culture and the music culture. It's pretty cool. All right, fellas, I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow, we're gonna continue with uh, York Morgan. York Morgan and Francis Zach Morgan. Remember, they're two split personalities. And if you ask how come they have a two split personalities, well, actually, there are people who have this. They have two persons living inside one person. You know, and they're talking to each other constantly. You know. It's kind of weird, but actually this does happen more often than you would think. All right, James. Later. I'll see you guys tomorrow. We're going we're gonna to find out what's going on with these uh, Clarksons. Who is PJ Clarksons and are they connected to uh, that St. Rouge... Rouge, drug, and we're gonna find out what's going on. We're gonna put this together to today, actually. No, tomorrow. I'm sorry. I'm thinking it's already Saturday. It will be Saturday pretty soon. All right, guys. I'll catch you later. Thank you all. Appreciate it, man. It's been a lot of fun. Six hours, man. Six hours and 20 minutes. Holy shit. Holy shit, man. Crazy. <laughs> Sayonara. I'll see you today at the afternoon. Sayonara. <laughs>